All right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back uh, to comics. It's been a bit, but this is the show where... Okay, that was weird. <laughs> this is a show where we go over everything in the comic universe and surrounding comics, and that concludes video games, movies, TV shows, toys, or uh, figures, and around the world, you name it. Uh, we're your host, Technique, and Nighthawk Plays. What's up, Matt? It's been a while, man. How you doing? <laughs> it feels like forever, but at the same time, it doesn't, man. But uh, yeah. happy to be back. Happy to be talking with you, the chat, audience, everyone, uh, Marvel, DC, and everything in between, man, like you said. Um, we got a lot of stuff to cover. It's been a while, a couple of weeks. And um, before we get into it, once again, um, I was talking about it off air, but man, congratulations to you. What you and uh, Twitch and your, your co-hosts have done with the Olympics over the past couple of weeks was absolutely amazing, man. So huge, huge kudos to you, brother, on that one. Thank you, thank you. How, yeah, I mean, really a... quick, how was it? Like, what was your, I mean, I know you loved it looking at your Twitter, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was a lot, dude. Um, we, <laughs> we planned it out, uh, it took about eight months, nine months to get everything kind of going, and then 17 days of, olympics a lot of research going in i mean it was my first time doing um kind of like a sports recap type thing uh it was it felt natural but yeah. i did take a good bit of journalism back in in college so um and with with that with advertising which is not advertising uh back then it was it was basically just journalism and uh you know took that i kind of snapped back into that and uh, was able to pull it off with my co-host it was real fun. We met a lot of superstars, man. We sat with Olympians. We sat with That's NBC cool. analysts that were ex-Olympians. We sat with, like, people, uh, celebrities. Um, and uh, it was wild. It was wild, man. It was a wild ride. But uh, happy and sad that is over. Um, but that's <laughs> we we knocked it out of the park. NBC is extremely, extremely happy with Twitch. That's good. And uh, that could just mean only good things. So we crossed our fingers for Winter Olympics, and uh, which next, which is next year. Oh, it is. Oh, so, oh yeah, because of the timing, and everything. Yeah, that would be next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to get back on track, and then we have Paris in twenty twenty four. So that's gonna be wild. And twenty twenty four is gonna be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, no, it's I'm wild. Like, it is wild, man. So, so yeah. once again, kudos to you, man. That's that was preach, that's really preach. awesome. I know everyone that took part of it. While, while you were, I mean, you were a busy man, uh, a lot of things have come up. A lot of things have happened. I mean, we're going to go through the show really quick. Um, for those of you that are new here or uh, to kind of just get back into it, what we're about, what we're doing, um, and some of the things we're going to go over today. But have you been able to catch up on a lot of the things that have been uh, happening in our world? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I was one of those crazy people who uh, should have been sleeping but didn't. Um, What's sleep? During this whole Olympic thing, I, you know, I spent eight hours with the olympics and then i got off and i streamed and then i got off of that and i made sure i was up in the world of comics and um there's a lot of stuff going on you know from michael b jordan making his own superman joint to yeah <clears throat> to uh you know a war for wakanda coming out soon and was was deep in that silently watching from the discord because you know, i just <laughs> couldn't participate in a lot of things that they wanted us to do there's a war table coming up with that um you know, we had New World, which is not really comics, but, you know, that game is pretty big right now. Just about uh, so we, everyone. With that. Just about yeah. everyone that I, that I know can think of or watch at least tried it. I mean, this is, yeah. this is like WoW back in the day. I mean, I don't think mm -hmm. it's going to be a WoW killer, um, but, I mean, but I mean, it's a perfect a time for it to come out. So. <laughs> You know, I don't mean to laugh, but yeah, that is Blizzard is, that is true Blizzard right is doing now. Doing a great job destroying themselves. So we, we, yeah, yeah. I always always steer people away from the killer talk because you know every game is MMOs. We want them to succeed, just like just like Avengers. I want them to succeed. Yeah. People are always like any game that comes out, they ask me, is it better than Avengers? I'm like, dude, <laughs> Avengers will come along. The content, like people gotta understand, is like content. Especially with Avengers and MMOs, you can't just poop out content when you want oh, to. Oh, yeah. Especially when you're dealing with an IP like Marvel and Disney. Everything has to go through a long, grueling-ass process. Yep. It probably takes somewhere up to a year to release anything that's rights-related. All the models have to be different in the beginning. <clears throat> Cannot relate to anything Disney. 
cannot relate to anything that's currently out in the Marvel Universe until they approve everything in the Star. So all the groundworks, the skeleton models, the rigs, yeah. you name it, they all have to be approved. And getting oh, yeah. in touch with Disney is its own process. You know, I've been in those talks. It's I was supposed to do two shows for Marvel Avengers, and they both took three weeks to get back with just Ooh. seeing what we could use for banners. Okay. Oh so that's not gosh. even a character model, <laughs> you know? Oh my then gosh. you have to hire vo voice actors that are not just amateur ones like me, you know? So you have to hire people that's been in the business for many years. And then... Like, um... Oh my God, what's his name? David Fenoy. Like, Christopher... Wait, who's playing, uh... uh, uh Christopher, Christopher Judge. Christopher Judge, yes, yeah. Yeah, but you have Dave Fenoy, you have That's true, um, yep. Deborah, God, I don't want to mess her name up. Let me see if I can get it real quick. I got it right here. Uh, you have, yeah, Deborah Wilson, Erica uh, Luttrell, who's been, these these are these are these legendary are names, cats yeah. that's been in the business for a long time. So, and, this, and the production of Wakanda is probably more important than the original game because this is it Wakanda is what's going to put Avengers back on the map. Yep. So it's like, this is important. You go ham for the first expansion because the first expansion is always a recovery period. Your, your opening scenarios, right, <clears throat> to any video game is going to be crap. Whether it's a great game or not, people are going to talk about it. If it's a great game, people will talk about it for a month, play it, and forget about it. If it's a bad game, people will talk about it for a month, still play it, but it's negative, and then forget about it. Then you go through a post process where people say the game is dead. Then you then yeah. you come with your first expansion, and then that's yeah. the recovery period. That's when the real game starts because you've had six years of development, and then you have another five. I mean, excuse me, six years of development. You had another one to two years of recovery. Well, you know, you have your local, your loyal fans playing the game. Yep. Then you have you bring those loyal fans in for consulting. Then you hold meetings around those people. Yep. Those people hype up their communities, and then you bring out the expansion, and then expansion hits, whether it's good or bad. Oh, man. So it's, yeah, so, you know, same thing with, with any other video game. I tell people, stay, just don't worry about one game killing another game, because at the end of the yeah. day, you're always you want gonna all have... those games to be successful. That is true. WoW, <laughs> because Blizzard is, uh, they're, a bunch of, they're a bunch of cowards. That's me, that's coming from me personally. Um, yeah. Oh, man. But, but anyway. But yeah. I was a, uh, <laughs> one of the things that we will be talking about a little bit today is War for Wakanda. I mean, for those of you that are uh, just joining us here, uh, what we do here at the comics, it's not just comic books, it's not just TV, it's not just movie, it's not just video games. It's a little bit of everything. It's what's new and what's hot. It's what's coming out next out in the world of, um, of, uh, 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 of superheroes. Right, we got a couple of things that we're specifically going to talk about today that I'll let Frank uh, uh, hit you up on. We'll have some Q and A at the end and chat. We do have our chat in front of us, so whenever we're talking about anything that that piques your interest or just in general want to say hi in chat, please let us know. We got you. Or if you're listening on the podcast, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah, do we got on free. tap for today, man? Feel free to comment. Um, we have a lot. Uh, we will go by section by section. We're going to be talking about. Um, Suicide Squad, we're going to be talking about uh, What If. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, potential future of Marvel and Sony and Warner Brothers and whoever else is trying to make comic book movies out there. Um, and, yeah, we're going to be talking about, like, what's to come, you know, uh, with the comics, the the show, this show. Yeah. So I guess we can start off with... Um, let's start off with Suicide Squad because I give DC a hard time. Um, yeah, you do. And there's a reason why I give DC a hard time. It's because they half-ass everything. They really do. Uh, they have all these great IPs. They have so much. I get pissed off because it's like, I'm pretty sure there's other directors out there, like indie directors and stuff, that could probably do a way better job than they do. I mean, hell, you can go on YouTube and look up a movie, uh, a fan-made movie that's better than half the stuff that DC puts out half the time. Um, and it's... Look up, I mean, yeah. specifically, I mean, we've all watched it, Bat in the Sun Productions, everything yeah. that they've done with Batman, and now they're actually <clears throat> working with uh, the Green Ranger himself, uh, doing some mm -hmm. some dark Power Ranger stuff, which looks really, really cool. Yeah, so go ahead. yeah, Sorry. and uh, that's that's my point, is like, give, give, hold a freaking, 
a movie festival, a DC movie festival. Find out which one was gr is great. Pick that director. Give them money and assets Ooh, like and let them go ham. Like, as long as they have a guideline of what they can and can't do, what do you have to lose? DC is in the toilet right now. And they're, they're swimming around. They're floaties, you know? And, and, and it took for them... This is going to be sound really mean. To steal from Marvel. I mean, Marvel didn't, they didn't really steal. Marvel kind of <laughs> shot themselves in the foot with James Gunn. Anyway... <clears throat> Unfortunately, got rid of Jay's gun, and DC and Warner Brothers was like, yo, don't even step. Nope. Once you step foot out of that studio, you're going to be a part of Warner Brothers. Yep. Like, the moment you step out. And, uh, yeah, he brought Guardians of the Galaxy to, to, to DC, and it was, it, was, it was great. It was, it, a, it was fun a fun ride. fucking film, dude. Like, it wasn't meant, as I talked about with Matt earlier, about not being a wild killer. It wasn't meant to kill off Guardians of the Galaxy. It wasn't meant to kill off Marvel. <clears throat> It was meant to give James Gunn something he didn't have at Marvel, and that's complete freedom. Yeah, uh, complete freedom, and and we see what. Oh, he and you can saw do that at the beginning freedom. of the film too. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that film. Yeah, the film was wild, dude. Like it was, it was like a Quentin Tarantino, <laughs> you know, was. James Gunn anime, just everything all in one. Like to to where they were switching, they had chapters within the movie. And they were using prop or, you know, digital, but yep, let's just say yep. props to do it. I think my favorite transition was in the city um, with Starfish, but it was like the camera was panning and it just spelled out. But yep. when they went past, it was just broken up shit. That was dope. Like, that was really cool. I, the, the cinematography was dope in Suicide Squad. It was, it was, it was a work. Of, it was art. It was artistic. It was. Right? It wasn't, it wasn't like... Marvel got it, man, when it comes to the CGs. We, we know. We like goddamn CGs. But, man, was it artistic and fun. And Idris Elba just, that was his movie. Oh, he honestly. killed it. He absolutely killed it. He was the main it. character. Yep. It wasn't Harley Quinn. Nobody's talking about her. No. Even though Margie did amazing. You all right? I liked her Harley Quinn in this. And a lot of people are saying this is a different Harley Quinn. I liked her in this better than anything she's done. Birds of Prey. Oh, yeah. Suicide Squad. Her and this one was, it was a masterpiece. And I think, it's funny, Matt, I was talking to somebody about this. Uh, I do TTRPG, which is tabletop. Mm -hmm. But I take it, we take it serious as, it's, as if it's a actual production. Like, we, we, we do it, the, our, the role play is like, we don't have a script, so it's improv. Okay. But I take it super serious. Yeah. Right? And um, we had what we were noticing is when you're a good actor, right? It's not about your acting skills. It's about how you infect and 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 uh, inspire those around you to become better actors. And Idris Elba is such a good actor, so good that he makes everyone else look good too. Yeah. And it's not really his. It's just his presence. It's kind of like Denzel Washington. You yeah. don't go on set with Denzel Washington to just act you go on set to live <laughs> in the moment with denzel washington you know so i think that's kind of what the effect that idris alba had on everyone it's like everyone's game stepped up even john cena yo john did really well cena was really good as peacemaker <laughs> yeah. i was uh peacekeeper excuse me i was yeah. very surprised at how i didn't see fast and furious um, and, and, you know, the direct to DVD movies that he did with, uh, the WWF, uh, WWE, excuse me. Mm. I, uh, you know, I watch him when I'm a wrestling fan. I watch him on wrestling. He was always very good with the, with the microphone. And mm. I, I was, he, he hit his marks when he needed to hit his marks. Uh, he had the action down pack. Actually, there was the one scene in the movie where I thought it was one of the coolest scenes I've ever most recently seen where they panned in on his helmet with the fight scene with him and, uh, um, uh, uh, what is it? Rick flag, not Rick flag. Um, him and the captain, I, when they, yeah, yeah, when yeah. they focused in on the helmet and they were fighting around it, I was like, Oh, that's actually really cool that the way they're doing that. But yeah, him, John Cena was a really good piece of that film. And you look at, you look at, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, shark. You look at rat catcher two, you look at Margot Robbie's, um, Harley Quinn, which I do agree was her best portrayal mm -hmm. of Harley in the three films that she was in. Whether it's James, whether it's Idris, the combination, or just the the group or family mentality of it, it, it this film was 
even though it was a DC film, it it wasn't a DC film because it was good. And it, I hate to say that to because I love DC. <laughs> it was, it was a like Marvel, Marvel 2.0, dude. Like, but the one thing that I love the most about it is something that you've said before. I am so yeah. happy. These characters specifically in DC, with the exception of Deadpool in Marvel, these characters in DC need to be a hard PG-13 or an R between mm -hmm. seeing Harley do her, like literally, uh, I mean, they had sex, but they didn't show it, but show that, the F-bombs going off, the blood, cutting and having mm -hmm. people, like, it fits the characters because they're all in freaking sane, and it fits yeah. their universe. I love that they went that route yeah. with this and said, you know what, screw it, we're doing it. You, I mean, you can't have the name Suicide Squad yeah. without being rated R. Like, yeah. Let's just be real. I mean, she did such a good goddamn job, dude. The the my favorite part of hers is, and I was waiting for it because James Gunn wouldn't shut up about her, you know, being able to unlock that damn lock by herself, like for real. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't anybody else. It was her, and the fact that she snapped and was just like serious Harley Quinn, like yeah. this is the Harley Quinn that you're scared of type Harley Quinn, not the. I'm always playful type thing, you know? It's like she snapped and she was serious and she killed, you know, everybody, you know, whatever. And she, and she just walks through it, but she's just like, okay, this is the person that Joker falls in love with, you know? That and scene still, with, the, yeah. with the gun, with the, the ex-leader, when she... Leader, just when like, she... You know, oh, like, that was so good. I, that, that, that breath was so important. Yep to harley quinn because it's just like all right now you piss me off type thing you know she's just like okay here we go you know like this is this is what you want all right cool and she just slaughters everybody and it's like and, <laughs> yeah. then, and then you're just like oh shit this is the harley quinn i'm really afraid of this is the one everybody should just not piss off to a point where she snaps you know yeah. and, and, and that's a, that's a big comic book ode because harley quinn has her moments where she's playful she could take a lot of batter and beat because she's been abused all her life pretty much but when she snaps, mm, you know, <laughs> like, so I was really happy to see that. And uh, Bloodsport was awesome. The, the scene in the beginning between him and his daughter, Oof. I thought was interesting because you didn't have to have it in the film. Yeah. You really didn't. For, but, you know, for fans, I guess it's, it's important. But that was, I mean, they didn't expend anything. They used that budget to the fullest because that girl. <laughs> yeah, they did is a very wanted actress right now because of Euphoria with, with yep. Zendaya. So that scene could have been used with any amateur, which I think DC would have pulled anybody. But the, James Gunn is, I feel like he's still stuck in that Marvel head where you make sure all your, I was going to say holes are filled, but I didn't. Well, I already said it. You make sure every every character hole is okay. That's even worse. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. You just We're make here. sure that every character is taken care of in the fact of you you owe them. Yes. Because what does Marvel do? It doesn't matter if it's an actor this big, a role this big. They fill it with somebody very important because later on it builds to something else. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. Later on. She's going to be important. Don't forget me saying that. So what I loved about that <clears throat> is they did that scene shortly after they had the whole confrontation with Amanda Waller. And then mm. I love how they poked fun at themselves because it was it was telling a story leading up to their comfort with their uh, blood sport meeting John Cena peacemaker. And he goes, wait, I'm him. It's a it's a joke that they are the same person, but it's a joke that blood sport is dead shot and her daughter and everything. I was cracking up the way that they played and shot and really sat down and wrote this film. I am. I was mm. just, I cannot speak highly enough for it. I mean, was it perfect? No, I mean, the MacGuffin with the drive and everything like that. You know, you could say what it is, but then again, it's Suicide Squad. You could take it serious, or you could do the James Gunn route and do you know, it. That whole that whole beat scene was works. fucking great. It was it was Excuse literally me. a mirror reflection of what James Gunn wanted to do yeah. with Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, it, the whole storytelling was exactly the same. This, I mean, think about Star Lord and his story and his his dad. That was the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen in Marvel, <laughs> but it worked <laughs> because it was in the film, and we knew what we getting ourselves into right yeah it's like suicide squad is the guardians of the galaxy of dc it literally is yeah they deal with 
the most insane, dumbest yep. freaking characters to fight, you know, on paper. But a it was starfish fun. from outer space. Yeah, it's a fucking starfish of everything. Starro. Yeah, you know, but it was fun and it worked. And it was scary because it's like, ill. You know, I was like, I was saying ill the whole time because I was like, oh, that's gross. Yeah, that's, it was. Yeah. It's awesome, you know. Um, but nah, we, we're hoping, I'm hoping that they bring Deadshot back because it'll be another play on the meme about him yep. having Smiley Tina that's just like him. It's the, it's the Spider-Man meme. <laughs> like, it's yeah, so yeah. good. What's I up, really Nooner? What's I up, Techie? Will Smith comes back for that because I think that's, that's going to be great, you know, at the end yeah. of the day. Bloodsport's badass. Let's talk about the characters. Bloodsport oh, is awesome. So good. The, uh, the, the costume badass the the freaking cg on the gun the gadgets badass, yeah man. idris alba owned that goddamn thing yep. and i love how they did they took older idris you know and put him in the role because then we got the experience and you know what i want dc you know what the frick i want <laughs> i want james gunn to do this i want nobody else to touch this but i want a tv series on one of brother paramount whatever the hell you guys got going <laughs> HBO Max. Yes, That's what you got yes, going. HBO Max. HBO Max, and I want Bloodsport versus Superman, and we want to see what happened when he shot him with that right? bullet. Right? Give it to me. I want to see that. The door is open, wide open, and I got a feeling they're going to do something because they wouldn't have mentioned that shit. Uh, you know, I'm going with the Marvel mentality when it comes to James Gunn because he's been coached, right? He's been, he has been trained for many a years yeah. to mention shit in stories and bring it to the live screen. Um... I know it didn't do good box office wise because let's be real. It's first of all, you have, <laughs> we talk about variants all the time, but this variant we don't fucking want. Yeah. We have Delta variant running rampant because you people can't. don't know how to be cautious. And you can't, you can't and, compare it to black widow mm, because black widow yeah. was a month ago when literally the world was in a different place than where it is today. And it was so, Marvel. And it was Marvel so too. People yeah. would literally go out. If we say, Hey guys, the floor is lava and there's a toxic, you know, spread on the floor. As long as you sit in your seats, the movie will be going. I'm good. They will go out and see it. <laughs> yeah, they don't I'm care. Good. It's Marvel. Um, with DC, you have a harder time. I mean, people been let, fans have been let down like over and over again. Yeah. You know, um, so it did better, you know, being streamed. Because and I everyone... wasn't going to go to the movies and see it. And there's no way. I don't give a crap who's predicting. It could be the Russo, bro. Uh, I won't go that far. If Russo Brothers would have did it, I would have went. Um, but, but, but you know what? You know. That actually, because you speak of digital, like everyone and their mother yeah. I know has a Disney Plus or yeah. they have access to it. Not of a lot course. of people have HBO Max. So uh, like, that's not necessarily true because they bandaged HBO Max with like Comcast and AT&T. Oh, that's they have. How I got it. Well, AT&T yeah. owns them. So yeah, it's that free. does make sense. Okay. So if you're paying for it, make sure you, make sure make sure you, you get it because it is a fun ride. And um, speaking of DC, we're not done with Suicide Squad yet, but... Uh, the third season of Titans came out on Thursday, and they actually don't have the first, not the second, but they actually have the first three episodes. Mm. And you want to talk about dark? You want to talk about things that I never thought I would actually see from DC on camera? That show gives it to you. It's it's wild. Mm. You know, we're not necessarily going to go ham into talking about it, but it's it is a wild show that that a you can't take seriously because it does do some 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 jumping the sharks in in the first two seasons but if you just actually go in and watch the third season i don't think you necessarily have to watch the first two seasons this the story that they're playing out this season and how dark it is it's wild it's gonna make your jaw drop it's gonna be it's really good it's really good but suicide squad i mean you were talking about tv and james gunn i mean he is gonna be on tv we have him. He's mm -hmm. officially signed on to work the Peacemaker. I said Peacekeeper before, my mistake. Peacemaker TV series with John Cena. And James has said, I don't think I'm going back to, to movies after Guardians because he's having so much fun building yeah. out Peacemaker. So maybe there is going to be a Bloodsport um, Superman Deadshot I, I mean, or something like so. that crossover I, on I TV. Think, that would be awesome. I think it's what they need right now. I think they need that push to make sure that... Um, you know, it's kind of like that rebuilding phase. You're kind of paving the road type yeah. thing, and they need strong directors like James Gunn, who's who's enthusiastic about making DC films. I think that's something that we yeah. just haven't had in a long time. You know, even sitting down with Snyder, we were told not to touch on it. So what does that say? Ooh, okay. That means that he's he's just not really that happy. It could be it could be the fan response. It could be the response that he feels like he's cleaning up messes all the time instead of like actually building a film that he wants to build. Mm -hmm. um, so 
do I think Snyder has a vision? Yeah. I mean, he did. What was that movie? Army of the Dead? Whatever. Army Army of the Dead? Army of the Dead, yeah. Sorry, I forgot about it the moment we watched it. Um, It's not that it's a bad film. It's just... (sighs) Snyder is suffering from fandom right now. And and fans don't forget a lot of things. And you got to come out and hit them hard in the face unexpectedly to kind of spin people around, you know? He has his core... He has his core people that love Justice League and all that stuff, and then you have people that just absolutely freaking hates it. But I think James Gunn coming into picture, the pressure is not on Snyder, whether he comes back or not, which I doubt he will, um, but the pressure is not on one person. And I think that's the thing DC had for a long time. It was always one person running the ship when it comes to DC films. Yeah. You know, versus Marvel having, like, a few gigantic-ass directors that can knock it out of the park. Um, that has credibility to where Disney just throws money at them. Here's, here's a million, here's like six million dollars. Here's, you know, how much every yeah. million, 26 million, 60 million dollars to do whatever movie you want, <laughs> you know, like whatever. Um, so Suicide Squad is great. Uh, I, I feel like they're going to do a continuation. Definitely going to be a Suicide Squad too, 100%. I hope so. They they, um, should, they definitely need to do it. Uh, Polka Dot, uh, there's so many good, that movie was so they, good. They it really was. so many people, but the funny thing what is they I loved about the it, though. Yes. Yeah. They killed off uh, the Mimi people. Yeah, they did. Uh, Even know. though they were, some of them were the big ones of yeah. the first one. Mm-hmm. They they used them properly, and they, yeah, yeah, they did. They, they think, kill off the Mimi ones. I think they're boring compared to the new. Right? It's just like it's like these characters can be boring, but we but we souped them up to where you feel you feel for them if they now 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 you feel for like my wife was like, dude, I liked Polka Dot Man. You know, <laughs> and, and yeah, and that, that I was like, that was a successful movie. If you feel that way, like it was a great movie. If you feel that way, like people freaking died, bro. Like not even they died brutal. It was some Mortal Kombat shit going on. Oh, yeah. Um, Especially that whole first uh, the first scene on the beach. And of course, at the yeah. end, too. Uh, but you talk yeah, about people John like, like and, uh, even even though the dude's name Rick Flag, Rick Flag. Yeah. There you go. Like um, yeah. Ratcatcher, too. Seeing her story with her father, which was Takai uh, Wahidi or however you pronounce his name, that mm. was actually cool seeing him in a DC film. Funny enough, uh, with yeah. James Gunn behind it, awesome there. Speaking of Marvel, it was classic James Gunn, story. yeah, it was James yep. Gunn storytelling too. Fucking shit was classic. It was hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. It was stuff that you you're just kind of like, uh, what the fudge, you know? Hey, Sorry, my up? son wanted us to come over and say hi. I'm daddy's working, Hello. okay. We're talking Spider-Man. I love you. <laughs> Hi, Bubud. I forgot to shut the baby gate. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, you'd appreciate this. I asked my son the other day, hey, Oliver, who's your favorite superhero? Superman or Spider-Man? Spider-Man! I was like, no! Oh my God, at least you like one. It works. Good taste, good taste. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, uh, Michael B. Jordan can do a better job with Superman now that, uh, What's his face is gone. Zach? For now, anyway, we don't know what. Um, man, my head's drawing blank. It's been too much. All I have in my head is Olympian names and shit now. Uh, <laughs> uh, Henry Cavill. Hen- yeah, Henry. I see. I liked Henry him. Hibble. I liked him as Superman, but no, if, I think if he's they, good. If they I think, take good. This... I think he's completely wrapped up in in The Witcher. I don't think oh, he's ever coming back. I'm but... excited for that one. I'm excited yeah. for December for that. Is it December Witcher, or September? Season one put me to sleep, bro. I don't think it was really. That good. I think it was very overrated. Ooh, okay. I think yeah. I think hmm. Witcher was very overrated. I, I don't. I think he's a great Geralt. Yeah. I don't like Siri. I just do not like her. Okay. Uh, no shame on the actress. I'm pretty sure she's great. But she cannot. She she does not do a good job at Siri, and she was not a good cast. That I feel like that was a gimme cast right there. I, I think they need to go back to the drawing table. Okay, fine. Has have her as a child, have her as a teenager, but completely switch her out as an adult. As an adult, but okay. they're not gonna do that. They're gonna keep her because that that girl is not as young as she seems to be in the film. Yeah. she's a lot older. She's a freaking grown woman, but she just doesn't have that look of Siri. You okay. bring up Siri on the internet right now, you're like, badass. Like, Geralt 2.0 and, and woman Look at form. the game. Look at the game. You know, yeah. And then you look at her and you're like, okay, he has to protect this little girl all the time. I already saw the trailers. I'm not digging it. It's just not what we got. I, the video game did a better job, you know. Um, 
I can't wait to see the world, like where the witches are and like everything yeah. that you've seen in the game. That's dope. But her the hunters look dope. <laughs> but her Okay. Uh, anyway. Oh I hope they do better with that. But anyway, long story short. You know, I hope Michael B. Jordan has fun with the Superman. Um now's the time to do it. My thing is this controversy is about people doing stupid shit left and right, people doing hate raids, people are hating on people of ethnicity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and culture and stripping people of that. And it's just a lot of negative things going on. So now's the best time to go ahead and throw your gun. You might as well do what you got to do. You know, Michael B. Jordan, perfect timing, man. Go ahead and make Superman black and go for it. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, is that the point where you're just like, eh, whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, do it. I, I, it's, it's, I mean, there's the new Wonder Woman take over looks badass okay <laughs> it's not it's not who you're normally seeing you know it's this big strong black woman over there and she looks she looks like she's gonna kick some ass and it's awesome to see that and i hope they bring it to the movies and have her team up with uh Gal Gadot. yep you know i yep. we, need, we need those moments especially in dc that's why idris alba was stupid important for that movie oh yeah it's because representation is so important it, like it, if you want to rile an audience together you need to have more representation, and that's across the board. Look at Shang Chi. Like how many the yeah. Asian community is going ham for that movie right now, as they should. Yeah. Um, freaking um, uh, Miss Marvel. Whenever it drops, is going to be going ham. I mean, that's that's another. That's the Eastern yep. Eastern Asian Indian cu cu yep. culture that's going to be brought up. It's so important to have that, and that's why I think Marvel does so well. Is because those films are a I mean, look at, nobody gives a crap about them, but look at Eternals. Eternals is a cesspool of gigantic That's actors and actresses. very true. We don't even give it credit for the casting because nobody cares about Eternals. And the reason why nobody cares about Eternals is because Marvel's just so goddamn good at writing stories. Because people are more upset the Eternals are here, and they're like, what are you good for? What are you here if you let all this shit happen? That's why people are upset. It's not like, oh, I don't care about this film. It looks bad. But it's it more like we don't give interest. a shit about the characters. But it piques your, <laughs> but it piques your interest because, yeah. I mean, the end of the trailer, you know, now that Captain and, and Iron Man are gone, who's going to lead the Avengers? Uh, I mean, I mean, it's... It's it's are they going though? It's but that's what that's why I like that's what I like about the Eternals. It's <laughs> we're gonna figure out why or we believe we're gonna figure out why they didn't interfere with everything that occurred on Earth. And mm. and if it's gonna be like kind of a, a prequel, a present and a future aspect of it, it definitely piques my interest interest. I think I think it's gonna be one of those things where it's <clears throat> it shows you the history of Eternals and how they had the influence on Earth. Mm -hmm. Like how people became with technology and stuff. They were the aliens, so to speak, quote unquote, that yeah. gave people technology and watched them flourish throughout the years. And then they know about Thanos. Thanos doesn't affect them, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Um, and then after that, they talk about the Avengers and how the Avengers die off of aches, AK break up, whatever. Hmm. But but I believe the story of Eternals is going to start popping off because of the multiverse. I wonder if all that stuff is going to happen simultaneously. You know, all goes back to Loki. Good job, Loki. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, the multiverse. <laughs> you're going to see that. That's going to be a theme in every show from here oh, on absolutely. out. Absolutely. You know, because I mean, that's it's the break in time and stuff like that. And it may not be to where it's like, oh my god, they look up and they see streams of white breaking all over the place. I don't, that's not how it's going to be. It's just going to be timelines and stuff are going to just happen. You know. So, um, so with that, do we want to go into what if now? Yeah, we can go into what if, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. So for those of you who don't know, what if came out this past Wednesday on Disney Plus? I actually thought we were going to get the first two or three episodes, but I was surprised. I was surprised we only because it's a cartoon like Bad Batch. They put out the first two or three right away. Yeah, so I thought they were going to do Marvel. this, but this was actually a longer cartoon than I thought it was yeah. going to be. It's like it was on par with. Loki, WandaVision, and uh, uh, Captain oh, America and Winter Soldier yeah. episodes. It was awesome. And, I mean, just from hearing Jeffrey Wright's voice at the beginning as the Watcher, all the way through the end with the post credit scene chat, there was a post credit scene at the end of this, or a mid credit scene. Um, so, uh, amazing. It's going to be going out, I believe it's 10 episodes for the next 10 weeks. We're going to be getting it starting this Wednesday. So if you haven't yet, Disney Plus, what if? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, Frank... I mean, what are your thoughts? 
Because you specifically had a lot of questions yeah, about it. I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling it in the beginning. Watch it. Oh, my God. Damn. It's like, you know, it was funny. And I was kind of talking about this last night on my stream. Marvel and DC switched places for the first time in a very long time. Movie-wise, DC did very did the Marvel thing, right? Good cast, good storytelling, fun movie. It was Guardians of the Galaxy 3.0 with James Gunn yep. doing his own thing. <clears throat> Marvel, who's not really known for their animation, freaking destroyed it. That shit so was good. so good. It was it was DC animation with with a marvel twist it's like they switch places for 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 a season and i'm down for it because god damn was what if good like that was super good and the fact that it was good now the animation was very very choice of artistic animation was spot on that was perfect yeah i like that cell shading kind yeah, of like borderland kind of realistic but it's realism not, right it's that it 2d that that turns into 3d it's really really good yeah 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 it wasn't hmm, how do i put it it wasn't a reimagining of marvel universe yes. they took the same voices they took the same character models so you know essentially the artist was fantastic capturing the look of these characters oh, yeah. too because everybody looked like they should hey what's up what's up silent um it was amazing god damn it was literally captain america being retold in animation and he took out all the fluff right while the fluff that people complained about shortened it yep. knocked the whole damn movie down in 40 minutes and and literally switched it around and i was like i was my mind was blown when it was over me and my wife were like is it over <laughs> like, what that's Where's when you know my... you did a good job oh man what a freaking fantastic thing they did that I... storytelling was amazing they had i mean the old bucky we got to feel old bucky back and i was like bro i forgot old bucky like, yes you know? And that, and, uh, and once again, to reiterate, I, outside of, was that Chris Evans as him or did yeah. they, change? it was all the original voice actors. Was like it was so cast. good. I just didn't know if I missed it. Cause I remember seeing so Sebastian Stan as the credit It was a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, it was recorded a long time ago. So it was the whole yeah. original class and we will be, everybody in this is 100% original. Even, everybody. yeah, even, even Tom Holland, even, yeah, everybody is. Chadwick on his last, yeah, this is his last, he's yep. He's yeah, he's absolutely in it. Yep. I man, yep. like, uh, it had Michael B. Jordan, Killmonger, all Killmonger. Of yep. yep. I I I I like. I'm I'm with you. I absolutely loved it. It held me the entire time, from the beginning of of hearing the Watcher explain what this is, explain what's happening, and he even even him interjecting where he says, oh, "There it is. That's the point that changed this. That that diverted itself from the <clears throat> from the universe. Yeah. Like it was." It was incredible, and I love how you have the Hulkbuster, but it's not Hulkbuster because it's not Tony Stark calling it. It's called the Hydra Stomper, and Captain's doing it, being in there. He still gets somewhat frozen. <laughs> like the the overall story was fantastic. the The end is obviously piqued my interest as well, but man, it was good. It was it was really good, and I love um how Peggy Carter's Cap, uh, Captain Britain mm -hmm. felt like Captain America, but it was different. She felt mm -hmm. actually even more brutal than Cap. Well, yeah, like they she was going ham with it. Like when she was hitting those people with the uh, uh, with the people. shield, and she bust through. Th like you, you, it was not. It was not Captain America doing damage. It was no, her, and I loved it. She straight up killed people. Yeah. She has no love for Nazis, bro. Like she <laughs> yeah. straight up killed those damn people. And you know what's funny? They they did a very good job putting up with the problem back then of women being in power. Oh yeah, the the right? uh, the captain, their their yeah. their back and forths were really good. Yeah, because he didn't feel like women should you know don't have blah blah blah. But when women do well, then they want to take all the credit, dude. Why is this so perfect when it comes to Blizzard? Anyway, um, <laughs> it's like they was like reading Blizzard's news. It was like, yeah, this we got this, we got this check mark. Um, the, the, you know, it was, the, yeah. it's the biggest problem with men in general. And um, the reason why she was brutal is because she kept being told that she's not good enough. Yeah. Uh, so she was having fun being brutal. She got to experience her thing. Some may even say she might even be better than Captain America. So it's, it, don't say that in public. People might flip out on you, but um, it's, it's great. It's so goddamn good, man. Go watch it if you haven't watched it. Do your homework. We're not, I'm not going to go into too much to spoil, but 
I mean, clearly the stuff that we said is invisible. If you've seen anything about What If, I mean, she's yeah. the number one character. I believe every episode is going to be a different story. Um, leading, because that needs to lead up like that. It can't be focused just on her. I mean, at the end, they'll probably do a reunion episode where they'll bring all everybody together and form the Avengers. Yeah, what I'm... Kinda. what I'm, It's not really the Avengers. It's this... It's probably, it's probably going to be something past the Avengers because... Um, I think, I think this the events, universe is. Yeah, the events that take place still happen. Um, but interesting enough, and we don't want to spoil it, we'll, we'll, we'll do more of a job of that next week. But there's something very important. There's, there's so many very important Easter eggs you've got to pay attention. And you probably need to watch it twice to catch them. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. Um, and it's classic Marvel, how they do it. Classic Marvel Studios, I should say. And it's, it's, it's great. What a great, the, oh my God, what a great thing yeah it's so good i i they're going to they're definitely going to create something towards the end like i like how they're going to be bringing in this cat the same but different characters if you know what i'm saying when it comes to spider-man when it comes to dr strange and thor and everything um it's the same but different characters so we are i think at the end we are going to have this universes because we are in the multiverse now this universes version of the avengers and my real the thing that really piques my interest is they've said it before and we talked about it like this is canon and these yeah. characters are supposed to appear in TV and cinematic like they're actual real like you're not going to have a cartoon next to you know whoever it is on the big screen but that's that's very interesting to me so i think the watcher specifically is going to be just like how Kang and Loki are major players in this next phase, for some reason, the Watcher for me, because I think you can, you can um, not correct me, but you can give me a little bit more information on this, because I know the Watcher is big in the comic books, right? Mm, he's like, huge he, in the comic he's books. Saying, him, and, him and Molecule Man are he's like saying speci- the essentials. Yeah, like he's saying specifically, I only watch, I never interact. But he interacts in the comic books, right? It's one of the bigger storylines, right? What storyline is that again? Is it that... doesn't. All right. So the Watcher doesn't interject while things are happening. He only interjects when something looks super catastrophic to where he's going to destroy multiverses, uh, to where he had to wipe out the existence of a multiverse. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. It, it's, yeah, he had to wipe one whole complete storyline out, but it, you don't wipe out multiverse. You, you either merge them or you find a way to like connect the dots. Okay. Um, but yeah, he, he, it's, it's more than one watcher, by the way. Um, so that's, that's a thing. It's a league of watchers, but, um, Altu, or O2, I to say his yeah. name. Watu, if that's him, yeah. if that's him. We don't know because we don't know what Marvel's going to be doing with that. Um, you know, they, they're they not allowed to interact with other characters, mm-hmm. but certain circumstances, I believe they create, like Molecule Man was created and he interjected with uh, Miles Morales to wipe out Ultimate Universe merge oh. it with prime universe oh. because it was the only way that they could save everything ah, because once the watchers get prime yeah okay. once the watchers get threatened you know what their existing is threatened, they gotta step in you know so that that was that instance right there but most watchers just sit there and they just they just watch and tell stories but i believe we're gonna get a little bit more with the watcher when it comes to dr strange Wasn't because that's he... when hmm? sorry sorry go ahead go ahead no 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 i'm just saying Wasn't... that's when they come together so to speak and yeah. Kang and everything else yeah i mean dr strange we're what four, we're about six eight six seven months away oh, from yeah, dr we, strange yeah, so yeah, yeah but 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 so it, I, I believe it is is watu but he was big with galactus right wasn't that the first time a watcher interjected mm-hmm. so we think about fantastic yep, and four was... we think about multi i mean and a lot secret... of things are coming back to Fantastic Four, brother. <laughs> well, and that's Secret Wars. Secret Wars, yes, and that and they're making that, right? Yeah. No, they're, they're making. making are they making Secret Wars or Secret, secret Invasion? Wars is what we're gonna lead up to because. Oh, Secret Invasion okay. is what they're making. Excuse me. Yeah. So I, I just invasion. had it. Still, still Secret Wars, right? Yeah. It's, I guess they're not gonna call it that because they're not gonna go verbatim, but the video games are all going Secret Wars. Uh, that's what the new video game is about. 
they have multiverse versions of each character. Oh, you mean the, the mobile game? Yes. Yes. Um, so that's cool. <laughs> you yeah. know, so we, we get to see a lot of that stuff. I just really hope that they do uh House of M and uh <laughs> what was it? A League of the, the it was like a League of Assassins, so to speak. It has Spider Man in it, Wolverine. They had the black and gray outfits and they were all killers, even Spider Man. They were all assassins. That was another multiverse. It was sick. Can't Damn, remember what it was. That sounds really cool. Yeah, they were brutal assassins. And it was like rated R comic book stuff and we loved it. And they didn't have a big series. Uh, I have to I'll I'll figure it out for next time we talk. Um, but I remember I remember that. I remember the suit that Spider Man had and it looked like an assassin suit, like a ninja. It was sick. That's crazy uh, man. cool. Yeah, and Wolverine, Wolverine left the charge. You know, he don't give a damn kill anything. Um, but he was Agent X, you know, Wolverine was. Oh, it was, it was I think I remember seeing those comic books on the shelves. I don't remember yeah. what they were called, but I do remember seeing those comic books. They yeah, because he wasn't Weapon familiar. X. He was like Agent X. Agent this, X, yep. it was like It was a part of the, I want to say it was part of the House of M series. Um, but anyway, long story short, uh, What If was great. Um, it's got a lot of setup. It's not like a puzzle where we have to put it together like Loki. Loki made you think It's more like episode. they give us everything that we ever wanted. It is literally the conversations you sit and have at the table and say, what if, you know, that is literally the conversations that you have, which was so dope. So for those like, of you- Captain America was a Captain America, you know? Yeah, I mean, what, for those of you who don't know, what if there are comic books that these are based off of? They're more one shots. Um, that you can go out and get. I mean, we're comic book guys here. If you want to get yeah. into something and you want to go a little <laughs> like a bit, uh, you know, back thing, yeah. shit crazy, go check them out. They're on digital. You could probably still find some physical versions of them, uh, especially Marvel Zombies. That's where that kind of spawned from. Uh, that's technically not canon. Like I said, it was supposed to be one shots. But what we're watching today, it is it is based on it. But obviously, they're going to make their own uh, tweaks to it to match what they're planning now and what they're planning for the future of of Marvel Television. And speaking of which, so we do have Marvel Television and we still have Marvel um, uh, movies coming out. To give you a little bit uh, brief of what we're looking at here, we, we have What If That's Out Now um, in about three weeks, right? One, two, yeah, actually exactly three weeks from yesterday, we have Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings coming out in theaters. Unfortunately, as of right now, it's not going to be available on uh, Disney Plus subscriptions. You have to go to the theater for it. But uh, I'm, maybe something will happen over the next three weeks. But we have that. Uh, the next movie after that, we have Eternals on November 5th. Hawkeye, November 24th. And then Spider-Man to finish it off in December with uh, Venom uh, Carnage now in, in October. But the interesting thing is there are a lot of Disney Plus shows that haven't been announced yet. Moon Knight, you may have heard some things on the internet about. We're not going to really go into it because it's we don't know what's true, not true, spoiler, not spoiler on it. The Guardians of the Galaxy special, Miss Marvel. So one of the big pieces of news that we can talk about for a minute here, if, if you want, Frank, is um, a month after, so October 16th, we have Disney, uh, Disney fandom, DC fandom, which we're probably going to see Black Adam, Dwayne the, John, Dwayne the Rock Johnson's The Rock, Shazam, and some probably other news maybe some from Valzad information to Superman. Mm. But a year to the date on November 12th, when Disney Plus comes out, when Disney Plus came out last year, we are going to have a Disney Plus event. Yeah, there's going to be probably some Star Wars stuff, but there's still a slew of shows yet to have release dates announced for Marvel. So what we know now, I know this isn't on the script. I'm sorry. I just I just needed to ask you, what are you, uh, okay. what do you think? If there's, if you think of Disney Plus um, convention, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What is one thing you would like to hear out of it for Marvel? If there is like one thing that you would love for them to say, now it's not going to be movies. This is strictly going to be Disney Plus. So we're not going to have like a yeah, yeah, Avengers yeah, yeah. five at four announced. Excuse me. I mean, what's one of the things pretty, they've been pretty consistent with the shows. I mean, they, they, when they said something's going to come out, it's come out and it's come out really well. Yeah. I want to say the shows are doing better than the movies and will do better than the movies. Um, I don't know. I just want the. I, I want them to say that we bought Spider Man. <laughs> I honestly, I'm so sick and tired of the Sony and, and <clears throat> Disney bullshit. Like, Disney just needs to cop them. Like, buy them. They they have the money to dis 
literally be like, Sony, what do you want? $6 billion? All right, cool, give it to me. They'll make, trifle that back, you know? Um, I, I believe Sony's only in this picture, period, is because they have Spider-Man under their belt. Now, that contract comes up to play very, very soon, so I really hope that Disney just says, we're buying it. And if Sony fights back, just buy Sony shit. You know, I just... I, at this point now, man, I'm just so sick of that drama. I, I just want to hear a staple on Spider-Man. We can't have him living in two different universes True. and enjoy it. I will stop liking it. You know, I'm already becoming more of a Black Panther fan than I am Spider-Man. Just because I don't have to worry about them ruining it, you know? Tom Holland does a fantastic job playing Spider-Man. I swear to God, if we lose him... No, actually, we're not, we're not ever going to lose Tom Holland because he is dedicated to Marvel. He doesn't care about Sony, let's be real. But if we lose him to where he's like, I'm not doing another film unless it's Marvel, and Sony's like, all right, we're pulling out, and they try to go with this Venom Carnage stupid universe, heck, man, that movie looks like trash. I don't care. It, it, it looks like absolute trash. Did you, have you seen the trailer? How he turns into Carnage? That looked like somebody's soapbox used a smudge tool. Anyway, don't even get me started. So, that movie looks so, like trash. So as, as someone, I, I'll, I'll admit, I am not knee deep into the Spider-Man lore as, as I probably should be. Like I like Craven. I like green goblin. I know uh, a, a bunch of different characters on there. I, but from you, I've been learning a lot about miles Morales and I've been di diving into, into his lore and comic books, but venom, you're a big Spider-Man fan. You see what they've done yeah. with venom now twice. When you think of any Brock, when you think of venom, who, who is he? What are they missing? Cause Cause like when I watch the trailer for Venom and I hear Venom and when I see the, 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 um, the renders of him from the comic books, it seemed like Venom is a, is, is not all there and he is a bad guy, but in the movies they're playing him off, at least this one, playing him off as a good guy and kind of like a slapstick oddball couple. And, and is that I not it? it? Okay. I hate it. Venom. Okay. First of all, what's his name? Tom Hardy. Uh, Tom Hardy. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan of him okay. being Eddie Brock. He's a great actor. He's not Eddie Brock. The Venom they created, they're making... It's so annoying to me. Because, first of all, Venom is not talkative, okay? Through Eddie like that. If anything, Venom has a love-hate relationship with Eddie Brock because he knows that he needs Eddie. It's a, it's a parasitic relationship. It's not... I'm your best friend, and we're talking about you making me breakfast. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Bro, it pisses me off so much because Sony, I feel like Sony is taking properties that's very important, and they're feeding off a of fandom they think they are, and they're making it meme-worthy. I that's hear you on that one. I'll give you that, yeah. Carnage is such an uninteresting goddamn villain. I don't care. I'll be the first one to say it. Who gives a crap? He is literally Venom's poop. Okay, the, 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 who? No one cares about Carnage in the movie universe because Carnage was not introduced correctly. Yeah, he, he was introduced wasn't. in an amazing storyline in the comic books, right? Wasn't it? Um, yes. Like, like the, but and the and the it's interesting so relationship deep. between them is Venom hates Carnage because Venom is Carnage's offspring, right? No, and that, Carnage is Venom's offspring. Yeah, that's what I meant to Venom. say. Excuse me. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I mixed it up, right? And so and, and they, so Venom should freaking... hate him and want to kill him, but he reverts back in the trailer like he's scared of him? Like I don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. It... <laughs> Sorry, there's I just so hit many a problems nerve. with the Venom movie. <laughs> there's so many problems with the Venom movie. They it's like they created Venom in a factory, so to speak. Or they created the offsprings of Venom in a factory. You know, and that's and just not how Venom was never really. And not, I mean, I know, I know the origin story in the movie, blah, blah, how they have it. But I'm just saying it's like, oh, we've captured all these people. We're not going to tell you how we put them in these glass boxes and we're going to introduce them to symbiotes. Ha -ha. Some might live, some might die. Find out next time. Bullshit. Like, <laughs> man, there's so many great stories they could have felt. They, they should have just gave Marvel Venom. They should just gay Marvel Venom. Yeah. After the Sinister Six, introduce Venom as this is your real freaking rival, Peter Parker. Welcome to the big leagues. Give pay respects to Venom, because Venom is badass, okay? And then once you have the 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 Peter Parker Venom back and forth, 
Then, if you want to extend those contracts out, having to wear Venom is forced to help Peter Parker because there's a threat bigger than both of them. Goddamn. How Ooh. easy is that? Don't do yeah. no stupid CG that you don't have money for, first of all. I mean, I I've seen like video games do better CG. And the, and the, like, the one thing is, it irks me so much. He doesn't have the symbol. It's literally just a pile of slime. Like, I think it's an iconic piece. He doesn't have yet because piece. he hasn't met Peter Parker yet. That symbol uh, came from Peter Parker. And you know Venom loves Peter Parker. You, the, Peter Parker is the perfect host. Okay. But, yeah. See, I, okay, that makes so sense it's a, now. It's an ode to, yeah, it's ode to Peter in the black symbiote suit. Like, how can you not have that? Literally, that's one of the most fame, famous, if not the most favorite Spider-Man outfits. Mm-hmm. It's the original black outfit. The black suits, yep, symbiote Spider-Man. So they they have a way if if Disney gets rights to it, have a way of introducing Venom. Venom leaves Eddie Brock, goes to go to go to uh, Peter. Peter finds a way, finds out that this thing is toxic to him, gets rid of it, goes back to Tom Brady when he's dying of cancer because he's been pulled away from the symbiote. I'm not Tom Brady. No, I was like, not, wait, yeah, not him. Tom I mean, Hardy, it is football bad. season. Yes, football season, yeah. sports. I can't had Tom Brady in my brain because of the Olympics. They had a commercial. Gotcha. With him. Uh, Tom Hardy, um, you know, dying oh, of cancer because because of the symbiotic relationship being pulled from his body, did some things to his organs or whatever, oh. and and created cancer. And he has to have venom, and venom feeds off of the disease of cancer that makes him stronger. That way, you don't have to eat people all the time because of the protein release from cancer so easy damn so i could direct good. it you know i just <laughs> i just don't understand I, I just feel like sony gets properties and plays with it too much they poke at it and see they when they throw the oh my god you're throwing shit against the wall and see what sticks is 100 percent sony's way. oh absolutely and, and, the, and what you just said i got the flashbacks to spider-man the video game and miles morales the symbiote harry osborne being sick the protein release of cancer or whatever his sickness was dude they're definitely gonna have we're we're gonna have a black suit symbiote spider-man in the spider-man universe in the video game at least if it's not the yeah, next yeah, game yeah. it's gonna be the third like that's actually i'm probably that's gonna be sick what type of mechanics mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to do in the video game as that spider-man that's gonna be insane that's gonna be yeah. insane yeah it's, i'm just it's guessing be great. but that would be awesome you know i mean the next film i mean the next movie i mean a video game we're thinking is gonna be miles and peter that would be cool. Um, and you do up. your separate missions, you know. You go switch back and forth. I don't think it'd be multiplayer, but if they did, that'd be hype. Um, but I think it's gonna be like you spend time with Peter for like you know a time. You spend time with Miles Morales, then they come together. One will be a, a, a AI while you're yeah. the other, and it'll switch off in mid battle. They'll probably do something. If if, if Insomniac's doing it, which they will, it's gonna be awesome. I, like, oh, they I have full faith. Yeah. Yeah, they can they can take anything. I hope they do. Black Panther. <laughs> so there's rumors that a Black Panther standalone uh, video game is coming out, like a, a single Black Panther video game. And I really hope they give it to Insomniac. I am a thousand times for it. I'm excited about the Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm not like watching the days on my calendar for Guardians of the Galaxy because literally they're just like, we have Guardians of the Galaxy. We're like, what the hell? And then they're like, came yeah. out of nowhere. And that was yeah. it, you know? So, and I respect that. I really respect games that go under the wire and they're quiet and then they hit us in the face with it. That. That's my favorite type of surprise, man. You have uh, this. That actually brings up a, an interesting topic. You have mm -hmm. Marvel, right? You got Guardian of the Galaxy. They're setting up their universe, right? Yeah. You have Guardians mm -hmm. of the Galaxy. You got Spider Man, <clears throat> Miles Morales is Spider Man. You have Avengers. Like they're getting more and more out there as far as video that games. So even been... though they're not, even though they're not connected, right. they're bringing right. out titles. Warner yeah, yeah, Brothers, yeah, yeah. Warner Brothers is doing that now. I'm sorry, DC is doing that now. You have Suicide Squad killed the Justice League from Rocksteady and Gotham Knights. What? Just because I saw the the Jason Bischoff's Project No Man Power Rangers, outside of those two, because they're the big two, right? When you think mm. of geekdom, when you think of fandom, what would be an interesting next IP to hit that stride and start, you know? creating video games and spawning off for something like that could it be a power rangers you know or oh, just yeah. something else I, hits I, your I, hits I your think, hits your you know wheelhouse maybe i was gonna say power Rangers and ninja turtles uh, Ooh, i think yeah i think both of those are really good ips with solid dark dark backgrounds that people don't ever revisit the visit okay um ninja turtles is 
<laughs> they got some dark shit in Ninja Turtles. And, and we don't ever get to see yeah. it because it started off as a kid thing. But the comics were really dark. And I think they could go somewhere. I mean, Sh the thing about Shredder and his origin story, man, they could really go hand with that. And oh, I, yeah. think, I think focusing on, like, the villains is, is the new the new trend that people need to start yeah. looking into because you set up a good villain, then you can set up good heroes. Because good heroes, you don't have a good hero without a great villain. So if you can set up, like, if you do an origin story of Shredder, we find out where Shredder comes from, that'll pique my interest way beyond doing an origin story of turtles being found in some ooze and they turn into some big giant wonder what they're going to look like type things, you know? Yeah. So it's like, focus on the Shredder, and they have that. They have the movie. They have the movie or show called The Shredder, if they want to, or like the whatever Shredder. his original name was before he became Shredder. Yeah. And he has like a Tony Stark moment at the end. He calls himself Shredder. Dude, I'd be like, yeah, man. Let me get that. Where did the Shredder? We don't even know. We don't even know where Shredder actually came from. We just know he's a Shredder. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And and and, so and the one thing like dope. the one thing I like about those, both those properties, though, you could go a little bit off the wall with it obviously for power rangers you have the mega zord and you have all, all their their zords and mm. things like that the fighting you can do with the foot clan for teenage mutant ninja turtles or yeah, read it or read it or mm. read his army like just the fight mechanics of of kind of being not a button smasher but you could do combos i mean think of the arkham knight i hate to say it but the arkham knight fight style or the way spider-man is going back and forth how you could do the combos the gadgets in both of those universes it would lend itself to a massive, I personally think, really good triple A IP that can turn itself into its own, you know, trilogy or an own franchise. I, I'm actually really intrigued right now because it's all martial arts. Teenage mm -hmm. Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtles is all martial arts. Like, that's think, really cool. I think Power Rangers is, is probably the better one to hit on because even though Power Rangers is weird, it's got really shitty production, we live for that shitty production. That's the one area it's campy that i think no one gives a crap about how it works it just we does. just know power rangers is awesome yeah because it's think about it power rangers is like one of the most perfect ips there are because it lived through so many generations yes, it's still it there they're still creating more power rangers if anybody could pull off a multiverse it's power rangers yeah <laughs> like there's so many i was a child when power rangers was out you know Same like, here. Uh, you know, the original Japanese Power Rangers. Then when it came to America, was, uh, I was like a little bit older. Was it Cayman you know? Riders in Japan? I think it was called. They were called like Cayman Riders. Yeah, it was something of that nature. Um, they had a bunch, though. And it was, it was a thing. universe. They rolled it off every couple of years. They changed yeah, cast. They universe changed universe. They even had... Um, they had dinos. Uh, yeah, yeah, they have go ghosts, I think, was one of them. Like, they've had some wild the... stuff. They had the one with the bugs. I forgot the name. Oh, they were like Power Rangers with bugs. I forgot. It was like Mantis something. They even had crossover episodes a lot. Um, but anyway, long story short, Power Rangers is dope. Um, I remember I remember being stupid hype in middle school. High school. The movie? Middle school. When the Power Ranger movie came out. Yeah. Was yeah that that was CGI. Hype, dude. <laughs> Looking with back that, at that CGI. <laughs> yeah, with the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. You know, that soundtrack was yes. hot. It was that good. Was that was a fire soundtrack. I can't look at it now, but it was great. <laughs> um, back then, it was everything to me. Uh, I think everybody had a, had a crush on Kimberly and Trini. Yeah. Rip, you know, Rip Trini. Um, but anyway, long story short, yeah, Amy Power Rangers is definitely it. And dude, Jason is still. Or, Jason, Jason Frank David Frank. Frank. Jason David Frank. Yeah. Yep. He's still a Power Frank. Ranger. That man is damn near getting close to fifty. He's still a Power Ranger. That's what I was talking about. Look up. Look up. Bat in the sound. Bat. Bat in the sound. Bat. Like how bat old is in he? the sun production. He's got to be up there for sure. Forty-six years old or something like that. He is. He's working with Bat in the Sun Productions, who have done some amazing fan uh, fan movies of Batman and other IP properties from DC 47. and Marvel. Yeah, he's pretty. He's he's right there at fifty. And they're actually doing something with with Jason in regard to Power Rangers and it being darker. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, he's if there's somebody that's really into the world of Power Rangers, he made it his life. Like Jason Frank ain't known for shit besides Dragon Ball. Uh, it's not known for. <laughs> we won't talk about that. For poor guy. Um, he's he's not known for anything else, uh, but power, I mean Power Rangers, and and that's okay. It's okay. Power Rangers is such a big franchise. Like, he's he's good for life. Oh yeah. And um, being forty seven years old, taking Power Rangers from when you were like 
early 20s maybe like yeah he was always the older person out of everybody early 20s all like for 27 years being with power ranger like that's dope that's I, it. people get shit on him all they want i think that's dope and i would love to see i would love to see a tv series or in a movie come out i will i really hope that somebody picks them up dude i hope disney picks them up i want disney and yeah i'm not evil i want disney to pick up everybody <laughs> because i know it's going to have the funding behind it that's why i want them to get picked up i think um, um so saban sold their rights to hasbro like three yeah. years ago and I, they do say just like hasbro's doing like the origin stories of gi joe and everything they are I believe they're gonna do that with who's it with um, Liongate Warner Brother. I for, who actually you're you're right you're right. Snake Eyes is coming out and who is well, that? It, it, didn't it already come out? Snake Eye Origins movie. I don't know. I just saw I just saw a trailer for it the other day. Eighty four percent. Oh god, it got destroyed. Uh, July twenty third. <laughs> um, it only made thirty million on one hundred and ten million. Wait, budget. wait, 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 wait. This is not the Snake Eyes I know. Hold up. Snake yeah. Eye, I thought Snake Eyes was Asian. Yeah, the, the Snake Eyes origin, G.I. Joe origin film. God damn, I got 38%. Yeah, 38%, Yikes. 43 on meta. So that's already out there. Who did it? Yeah, it's it, in though? the movie theater right now. Who did it, though? Produced. I'm about to look at this trailer. Um, I'm just trying to see who fucking did it. Chat, do you know who did it? While we look this up. Oh, Robert Schwinkles. And by who did it, I mean, I mean, even what's his name is on there. Aiko Uis. Uh, you know, who produced. Whoever it is is hiding because damn, Snake they don't Eye put their Origins shit on movie. anything. Good uh, Lord. Uh, Official uh, trailer here. I'll... Oh my God, it's loud. Who produced it? Jesus, why do they do that? Why did they make it so loud? Uh, let's see. I'm looking at the... Uh, based on Hasbro's story, Snake Eyes... The trailer doesn't even have anything in the beginning. Paramount Pictures. Oh. By Paramount ew. Pictures. Now, it I is don't... Paramount. I see the lion. Yeah, Paramount... Distributed by Paramount. There you go. It's by a few studios. Um, yeah. Skydance. E1. Yeah, so they all gave them the Paramount. money for it. I wonder. Yeah, yeah I Paramount's feel, not really doing that great in the movie world. Who Let's did? Uh, who did? Who did all the Transformer films? Was that Paramount? Too? Yeah, it was Paramount because of the stars. Lionsgate. I thought, no, right? it was Paramount because I remember the the stars coming through and it, it did all Leg that Michael Bay. Oh zoom, right, zoom, right. Zoom, I thought Legendary song. did it honestly. I, Legendary. I want Legendary and Lionsgate to come back because I always feel like they they had the fun films. Like they're Legendary the ones that had the legendary sold or like their china division like took over their american division and that's where kind of mm. stuff went a little bit um sideways oh, from that's why we didn't get a proper pacific rim 2 because pacific rim was an awesome, was awesome film fantastic but the second one was just awesome oh my god it yeah. was horrible yeah oh. Like I said, I don't know. That's why I want Disney to take everything. Just, because just if they have rights, everything. we know it's going to... One thing about... what People talk bad about Disney, but Disney... What's the word? They preserve everything. Like, things don't just die off in Disney. Like, they yeah. literally preserve it. Uh, it, it. It stays alive as long as it's making them money in some sort of fashion. And um, I think they could do a really good job with it. But yeah, I want to see Power Rangers, Power Rangers go to a different level. That'd be nice to see. Um... But I mean, other than that, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I right now I'm just like living as a fan in these in these stories, yeah, and and trying to just take on whatever comes my way because I know some kooky films are just gonna pop up out of nowhere, or TV series gonna pop out of nowhere. But right now I'm like every good movie that's in a movie theater that's making money is a Marvel movie. It's simple as that. Nothing else is really doing anything. Yeah. Um. You know, Marvel's to the point now where they just need to make their own movie theaters. <laughs> the marvel movie theater think about it they probably think about a marvel could. movie theater they with, probably with, could with glass uh like a, a museum set up you go through there you see all the 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 outfits from the movies the props and stuff yeah. and, and that that would be fantastic everything is marvel everything the, the food and everything is you know completely fanned out from marvel uh branding and stuff everywhere 
you know, you have a area where people can meet and sign with with directors and whatever on premiere nights. Dude, that will go. It will be so ham. People, people would that, that thing will make the, a ton of movie. Oh, I would go I mean, in a, I would, ton of money. Excuse me. I would go in a heartbeat. I and mean, the that would be, be like awesome. well, what the thing about this? We make the tickets thirty dollars to match the the you know the streaming the Disney Plus. But you yeah. get access to this stuff. Then they throw you, they hit you with a pass for every premiere. That pass will be like two hundred dollars for a year, to where you get the movies and stuff like that. Whatever you know, however much they want to do it, get the movies discounted, and mm -hmm. you get all these like perks for free, or not for free for what you pay for. Dude, I'd, I'd be all over that shit. They'd I'd go in a heartbeat money. for sure. I'd go in a heartbeat for sure. Yeah, that would be sick. But they, just, have a, they have they have enough to show. I mean, they have so much to show too. Yeah. It, uh, prior films, current films, yeah, TV, think about that. like yeah. everything. What if they did a a a, a, a rewind, you yeah. know, and they did all the movies in one, you know, in like a, like a series. It went through their gaps where they have movies and shows come out. They do it, yeah. and then what if they play the series through the movie theater? I mean, there's so many stuff they could do with that. I hope I hope they I hope they like look into stuff like that. I think that's what we need, like. Japan right now, even though it's a cluster with the with the COVID stuff, um, Super Mario World or yeah. Land opened and it's doing very well, doing very very well, even with a pandemic, it's making a lot of money. Marvel, uh, yeah. Marvel headquarters in uh, I think it was not Florida, it was LA opened up to that. That apparently, mm -hmm. I mean, there really isn't anything major, but it's a cool yeah. experience. People are saying, but yeah, I mean, what you're saying about Japan and uh super mario world it's i've seen the videos i've seen you know people coming out of it and then reviews and news that's cool you can yeah. make an experience like that that's that's wild that is wild yeah pretty dope there's a lot of things to be had um <clears throat> well i guess we could talk about uh avengers now uh, since we're talking about gaming and ips and stuff i mean war for wakanda comes out on the 16th yeah officially uh monday um it has a banging soundtrack yeah. It has a really awesome voice actors and actresses in it. Very legendary people like Chris Judd. Uh, boy. Um, yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. And uh, David Fenoy and Deborah Wilson. Um, and God, I keep forgetting her name. Give me a second. I, want, I always want to pay respects to these voice actors because they don't get enough of it. Oh yeah, they're, they're, the, 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 the cast that they put together oh, is Erica absolutely Luther fantastic. L, she plays Shuri. Cool. Yeah, David Fenoy plays uh, Zawavari, and Deborah Wilson plays Okoye. Mm -hmm. Um, and they they did a really good job, really, 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 really good job. It, it's it's a very important um, expansion, not only for the world of Avengers that video game, but for people in general. I mean, this is the f I, honestly. Yeah, this is the first black hero introduced in Avengers right now. <laughs> you know, in the game, uh, there, there's, there's, no, there's, there's nobody else. Yeah, you're right. Unless, unless you can consider King King Hulk <laughs> a brother, but other than that, <laughs> nothing there, man. You know, uh, just like the comic books. You know, Black Panther was one, the of, one. one of the first, if not the first, black superhero yeah. or hero, so to speak um yeah so we're gonna get that origin story they created a whole universe around wakanda the their their version of wakanda is, is gorgeous um, it looks really beautiful nice. from expect, everything i've seen yeah yeah expect very good lighting effects expect good textures um they already showed us like four different black panther suits uh they really did their research i mean they went deep and they look great and the one that they made specifically for avengers because you know that's how they have to present it it looks good. It's a combination of three different suits. Um, they even have the traditional original Black Panther outfit, which was tribal. Yeah, uh, with the uh, with the panther going around its side. I saw that. Sick, dude. Uh, they have the they have the 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 uh, side story Black Panther when he went into the city and became someone else for a while. It was mm -hmm. like a detective. It was really weird. Uh, I didn't like it, but they have that. Um, they have the movies already suits already in the in game suits already there um yeah it's dope uh i think they're i think they're feeding off of uh the movie with the kinetic um damage so he'll have that kinetic same way he can burst yeah. i've already seen it's literally ripped from the movies which is Saw awesome that. Saw that's that. what people want 
Yeah. It's a great power and it makes sense for somebody that is just a, a normal human, though there is there this ancestral speed and, and like power buff to them, but to give them a little bit something extra, um, that's nice. That's nice that they're they're taking that from the movie because it is really it's it's a unique um uh tech. And it makes mm -hmm. sense because the tech is coming from Aquana if they're so tech technical uh, logically advanced. I like how they're playing off of that and bringing that to the game as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can't really have a Wakanda without Vibranium. I mean, it's yeah. how Wakanda was built. So uh, I think I think that's going to be really great. Um, and you got uh, you got everything there, man. It, it, it's, it's, it's really, really, really nice. Uh, the, the, you know the combat's going to be badass. Avengers never suffered in the combat department. Yeah. Uh, it was always They fun. never really suffered in the storytelling department. The campaign of Avengers is, is AAA. I loved it. I love the campaign. Uh, it's just, you know, the multiplayer, you're going to have problems with multiplayer. People people rush and rush through games. I mean, MMOs to this day are still having problems with keeping people sated when it comes to content because people have this mentality that you have to be from point A to, to end game in like two seconds, and then you want to ask about end game. You know, they don't enjoy that that journey there. So speed rush, every expansion yeah. that comes out needs to have a strict 25-hour storyline to it. Uh, you know, something within it, because Wakanda is a 25-hour storyline. No. No, it's it, like it eight, brings it's, the... it's, it's eight to ten hours, depending on yeah, depending on how you. I'm 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 pushing the content to twenty five hours, um, but yeah, eight eight to ten um, hour story, which is great. I, I don't think expansions need to be super duper long on a campaign, um, but I do need do they do need to have substance and a point. Yeah. So my biggest worries is that it's going to be aim with different names. You know, we're going to be going through that rinse, rinse wash, and repeat. Once again, yeah. I think the campaign is going to be fantastic. I think it's going to blow us out of the water. Then we're going to have to worry about, okay, what about after the campaign? I feel like we're going to be going through the same thing over and over. The same, uh, the same so process yeah. of, of going into battle and multiplayer, the same uh yeah. like red rooms and things like that it's just the same stuff rewashed and rehashed and reskinned yeah I, it's gonna be hard to get away from that yeah realistically because what else can you do you know I, unless you make an mmo you know i, I don't know well, uh, what Black about Panther i mean whatever happened flower power from the one wait from that one power plus from the comic books uh he is an avatar of boss uh panther god yeah flowers are pretty much origin of the super soldier serum mm. Mm. it's in, like dbt the, mm, the, okay so the flowers are a product of vibranium the core substance being infectious to the wildlife around wakanda um and it was an important way to put it in the movie because it was a way for there to be a connection between the surrealistic version of paradise that you know the people of wakanda believe in and then there's a part of versus the sure reality of power and where it comes from. And I think that was their connection without having too much CG on boss to be to where that was your connection. That was her choosing you as her champion. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, what? yeah, yeah. I know, I know what you're saying. Um, I think that's, and in the, in, in the, the flower does have a big importance in the comics as well, but I, I believe it's more like the connection with Boss. Like this is her gift. You, she's be, she's choosing you as her champion, and it's a very very important part of the story because even with this origin story that we're gonna say, they are doubting T'Challa. They're moving pretty fast in this in this story. I'm not gonna spoil it, but the premise is, is that they're doubting T'Challa's ability to lead. Oh, okay. There's wow. a rift going on in in Wakanda. And a lot of people look at T'Challa as a child trying to fill a man's role because he's nothing like his father, what people are saying. Okay. Um, he, he, you know, he's very, he's very anxious and power hungry and a and little too over zealous and ambitious, you know, where his father was grounded and knew what was good for Wakanda and only cared about Wakanda. And that's the biggest thing is that T'Challa tried to really hone that in his brain to only be worried about Wakanda but he still had these outside. He he got too involved with too many outside affairs, which left Wakanda vulnerable to a lot of things. And I, th I believe the way the story is going to be set up. What's his name? Craven? No, not Craven. Oh, uh, uh, Claw. Um, Claw. I believe the the invasion of Claw 
is where people are going to start doubting the power of the Black Panther being with T'Challa because that attack shouldn't have happened, you know, on Wakanda, so to speak, because Wakanda is, you know, protected. It, it, it shouldn't, he, he should never have that much intel and, and that much uh, invasion rights to Wakanda. So I believe that's where they're going to start looking at T'Challa. Like, is he the real, should he be king? And, you know, Okoye and, and Shuri and, and, you know, the, the people that stand by T'Challa no matter what, his sister and his first general, are going to be like, Boss, you, 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 you're missing a point. Boss chose T'Challa as her champion, and she does not make mistakes, you know, type situation. So, and that also opens the door for, for future things to happen with, with that. And the movie, I'm pretty sure, is going to probably run off that premise as well because... They're not going to say that Chadwick Boseman's... I mean, they're going to pay O to Chadwick Boseman's death, unfortunately. That, that'll that probably be in, like, the, the pre-credits. I'm pretty sure they're going to run back a... Oh, yeah. One of those, like, you know, m- memorable moments type thing with with uh, Chadwick. And probably going to do a post-credits thing. But in the movie itself, I know that he filmed... He did film a good bit of the movie before passing. Really? Um... Because they had nothing written or anything. Well, no, no, no. It was because the first movie had a good part of the second movie. Like, they had a good part of stuff that they were going to use for the second part of the movie filmed from the first. Oh, kind of like a Lord of the Rings thing. They they didn't really all record it at once. They were in certain locations for it, yeah. Um, So I'm pretty sure they're going to try to meld those together and put those. They're not going to do a CG because they already said they're not doing it because it's disrespectful. Um, but I'm pretty sure that they're going to have some parts in it, or at least references to those parts about T'Challa. And I'm pretty sure they're going to do it to where T'Challa went off to do outside stuff against the Wakandan rules. Mm. And then Shuri takes over because they say, we going to, we need a Black Panther. You know, I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. Like and then Shuri will pop up and, and she'll be the Black Panther, which is great because that's actually a part of the book. And that's actually a way to really cover up a lot of stuff because a lot of shit starts happening. Once Shuri becomes Black Panther, women's rights starts popping up because you still have that problem with men being overriding women. That's still a thing, even though they're treated like queens over there. They still are subservient to the men. Yeah, That's going to pop up. Uh, the, the, uh, the rebellion will happen with, with uh, the Dory Minaj. They will pop up. It makes sense. It's called Wakanda uh, Forever. They will form their own group of birds. I forgot what they're called. Uh, but they, they do their own thing. And that's where in the comic books, uh, I think it was 20, no, 2018, 2019, where T'Challa returns and c- comes home to like, what the f- Everything's burning. Like, ah. <laughs> it was like everything is on fire. Yeah, it's a really good comic, man. You guys should it, yeah, definitely read it if you guys want to read it. But What is it called? Real, what is it? Uh, what's the series called? Do you know? Oh, my God. I think it's like Black Panther something, like 2019, 2018. You know, I know the cover. I can see it in my head. It, it's like they show... Building the buildings of Wakanda and show uh, T'Challa his back turn walking towards it or something like that. Oh, wow. I, I, have to, I have it on my phone. I'll, I'll get that information for next show. Um, um, it's been a while since I read it. One thing that oh. piqued my interest with Avengers when it came mm-hmm. out was at, like the second war table in because I, I was at the point I was really big into Destiny and I loved the raids. Did they ever bring raids into Avengers or are they still planning on it or did they scrap yes. that? Uh, yeah, they did, but the timing sucks. So they have a raid, and they were thinking about bringing about more raids. The problem is, is you can only do it once a week, and it's on the weekend, where everyone's like, uh, huh? no. Because MMO-wise, you do raids to get gear, right? It's the same thing. The idea is But to if get you only give it to us once a week, and we can only, it's time-gated. That sucks, that bro. That sucks, like, yeah. You know, so you need to have it all throughout. It needs to have a week progression period to where you have a whole week. Tuesday resets get, like Destiny. Yeah, and re, yeah, to get certain gear. If you hit that gear, you get a reset. You can run the raid as many times as you want. You just won't get gear, right? Is, so is that's the, what they need to do because, I mean, fuck it, let's, let's be real. The population of Avengers is not that great. Who's, so, the, who's the boss? Is it Abomination? No. Um, well, at least there's that. I don't. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to think. Because I remember I doing, I remember doing Endgame stuff, and it was always Abomination, Abomination, Abomination. I'm like, I really well, want to see a different and bad Master guy. Abomination and uh, a couple other people, but um, 
Well, yeah, I for, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I want to even say, did they release the raid? I feel like they I don't pulled think back they on did. it. I really don't think they did. Yeah, I think they pulled back. I That's think they I did asking. release it for a second, then they pulled back on it or something and reverted it. I, I don't want to give out too much information that I don't know I can give out, so to speak. Gotcha, gotcha, um, gotcha here. Because uh, I'm in Marvel's the Discord, but Avengers. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, hopefully they do well. You know, I think T'Challa is going to bring back a lot of people. I think a lot of people are going to be wanting to play it. I think people are going to definitely play the campaign. There's going to there's gonna be a surge. Look for it to be on Twitch. There'll be a surge of people playing the game on Twitch. Once that for eight at least for eight ten hours, once that campaign's done, I think people are gonna go back into their hidey holes. Um, I don't I don't know if they've done enough. Uh, they 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 have a new wasteland so to speak where you can just run around and do stuff in in Wakanda and all that good stuff. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, and I have okay. So I people wanted it. to know. So is Peter Parker Earth eighty three fifty one? Who's the assassin? Ooh. With Wolverine. So if you want to look into Say that, that again, series, it was Peter Parker. Peter Parker, Earth 8351. It's mm -hmm. a multiverse. A wild multiverse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's working alongside for Wolverine. He left his ex girlfriend, Mary Jane, for a woman named Alex, who greatly looks like Gwen Stacy. Uh, and then Danger came to Spider Man of the multiverse. Uh, Spider Man Otto Octavius sought him <laughs> out, among others, to fight off the threat. Technique, cool. please don't say too much. I don't want the mouse to send a hit squad after you. <laughs> oh. Don't say uh, too much about Avengers. The mouse is going to come. Oh, you're talking about Avengers? Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. I, I, I typically, on purpose, <clears throat> ignore that. I'm in, like, a VIP Discord. I ignore it, uh, you know, story-wise. And I haven't, I haven't gone to... There was a war... There's a war table um, coming out, and I haven't... And sometimes we get early preview to war tables, and I haven't signed up for it. Because, yeah, I know I do this show and I might say something. <laughs> Something's so. gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wait, didn't they have? Did they have the war table already or no? I think it's. Uh, well, there's another one. War for Wakanda on August 17th one... and War Table for Wakanda on August 6th. Ha oh, no, the 16th. Oh, so yes. it's actually Monday is the war table and Tuesday is when they're releasing it. Yes. Ah, so 16th is the war table. And mm -hmm. then, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, that Peter Parker suit is badass. Uh, that's where they got the, the assassin suit or the, yeah, I, whatever they call it. Yeah, the, I guess they call it the assassin suit in uh, the movie. Yep. I'm it, it's a cross between uh, Superior Spider-Man and, and that, that Spider-Man. This guy has the black eye shields and everything. It's really, it's really cool. Yeah, Peter Imagine. Parker didn't play as an assassin, bro. He killed people, oh. man. snapping people's heads with 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 webbing and stuff. It was nasty, freaking nasty. Well, that's dark. Yeah, it was really good, but yeah, of course, fans. No. Peter no. Parker wouldn't do it. I'm just like, that's why it's a multiverse. You anyway but that's why that is one thing that i love about it is you know from the first day we started talking um uh here on the comics you said peter parker is like the biggest villain of the of the marvel mm -hmm. comics He's because of, of ones, because yeah. of how wild it gets in the multiverse and everything and i loved hearing that because i never actually knew that about it but the more stories you tell from the comics Think the more it, and more and more peter intrigued Parker's i get He's had his hands in everything. He knows about Shield. Yeah. He knows about Avengers. He knows about Fantastic Four. He knows he's he's stupid smart. He's he's trusted by Wakanda. He there's so much. He's been Cosmic Spider. Yeah. Which when you become Cosmic Spider, you learn shit about the universe. So it's like or become Cosmic anything, you learn stuff about the universe. And now Miles Morales got that power for a little while as well, which made him age exponentially mentally. Um, so imagine you're one of your biggest superheroes becoming one of your biggest villains. And, uh, that was a very interesting series, uh, to read. That was a very old series too. Um, to where he was just like, he's okay. I believe that we're, we're going to get something similar, not maybe not in a movie or anything, but in maybe in a video game later on down the road, because Gwen Stacy is popping up a lot more lately. It was all about Mary Jane. Mary Jane, yeah. Mary Jane, Mary Jane. Yep. But now Gwen Stacy is Peter Parker's first love, his original first love. Um, I know it does depend on the, the comic book, but the original, original 
Spider-Man was, you know, that was all based off of somebody in Stanley's friends or whatever. And that and Gwen Stacy didn't have much time to live at all in the comics. She kind of just was there. You know, Peter Parker was madly in love she gone. and she died. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the goblin has a has a way of getting under Peter Parker's skin, and so but Gwen Stacy is yeah it's his it's his ultimate love, and that's why every every comic book from then until now where Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy meets and from different universes, they pretty much get it on. Um, it's like because it's a it's a it's a cosmic, what do they say? A cosmic uh, not a reaction but a, a a link or something like that. It's like. When Gwen Stacy sees Peter Parker, period, doesn't matter what time frame he's in, they're they're together. But yeah. funny story is, we we were picking on Gwen Stacy and we calling her the the mistress of the multiverse. We're trying to use the word very lightly. <laughs> Call her something else because she sleeps with every version of Spider Man. Doesn't matter. Okay, she's got a thing for Spidey. She even jumped on Miles, bro. Like I, I just I, <laughs> it's it's a thing. Um, but that's why I love comic books because you get attached to these characters and you, and you witness them throughout, uh, you know, the multiverses and histories and stuff. Gwen Stacy is, is Gwen Stacy's like ghost spider is really nice. It's really fun. Yeah. Um, I like her better than Jessica drew, uh, version of spider woman, which is actually a show coming. Yeah. By the way, that's another thing. They yep. Jessica drew. And it's part of the Marvel Universe. I don't know what to think about this. Because now we got to talk about Clone Saga. Yeah, you do? you can't have Jessica Drew without being connected to Peter Parker. But multiverse? Easy, okay. Multiverse. That's the answer to everything. Multiverse <laughs> and time travel are the scapegoats for any movie, any TV show, anything in a fictional world. And we have it here. Literally by doing what they did in Loki has given Marvel... And by by circumstance, I guess to somewhat Sony and the Spider-Man universe, Car Blanche to essentially do whatever the hell they want to do. Yeah, that literally opened up Pandora's box for everything. It's Pretty like much. you can't you can't get away from it now. Now Marvel already set it up, and it's something that we all believe. Rescue, Ironheart. Yeah, uh, they're coming. What was the chick name from uh, Thor? The god the the goddess. Oh my god, what's her name, dude? Oh, my brain. G um, female the for black The black chick. Oh, Valkyrie. Mm. Valkyrie. Valkyrie. Yeah, Valkyrie. Uh, Wasp. Yep. Uh, female Thor. Female Loki, maybe? Sylvie, uh, yeah. Jessica Drew, Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, the Marvels in general, all of them. She-Hulk. She-Hulk. I think they're going to do a... A thing with all of them because I don't believe they would they did that woman together you know standpoint in in uh, in game just for just to say we love women that's it's not the Marvel way you I know? mean you're you're kind of getting that with the Marvels now they changed it from yeah. Captain Marvel two to the Marvels now because you're gonna get um Khan uh from from mm -hmm. the Miss Marvel TV show you're gonna have uh, Brie Larson's Captain Marvel and. She was a, a Captain Marvel at the time. Um, the girl from WandaVision who gets her powers that I can't, that her name always escapes me. Rwanda. No, Rwanda. Rwanda. Um, hold on. Uh, God. Josh, uh, you probably uh, know this. I can't think uh, of it. God, it's on the tip. It's talking about It's tipping my tongue. Uh, WandaVision uh, cast. Uh, there she is. No, Monica, Monica Rambo. There you go. Monica Rambo, Rambo. Rambo. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yep. Rambo, Rambo. Yeah, Monica Rambo. Yeah, all of them. So I think there's going to be a film with with all these with, and then then you have Katie Bishop. So or Kate. Oh, Bishop. and Kate Bishop. Yeah, coming in as a uh, Hawkeye. Yeah. Well, Kate Bishop. Well, okay. Now I'm very confused. Kate Bishop is an apprentice that he took on. Yes. Or is it his daughter? <laughs> Um, if in memory this, universe. if memory serves me correct, he was with his daughter. C H O P. Yeah, he was with his daughter in Infinity War. Yeah, so there's obviously Kate Bishop, Earth six one six. So I'm just gonna read this through, just because I know Kate Bishop grew up as the youngest daughter of a Manhattanite family after her father Derek was an emotional disaster. Kate admired him. Blah 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 blah. Her mother was estranged. 
Blah, 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 blah. Because... El Matador. She finally met up with El Matador, something with Kate. So she has a relationship with El Matador. Uh, Kate was impressed by the Avengers, but specifically Hawkeye for being a regular human with no powers, but only skill. With the recent dissolution of her father, Kate turned to Hawkeye in her role as a, as her role model. Right. So she but... just, go ahead. This is just what I'm reading from 616. No, no, no. That's, the, that's, that's the story it should be because, spoiler alert for people that don't know, didn't read the comment. Katie Bishop's parents are Hydra, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I knew that, that her parents she were was bad, breaking, yeah. And she knew that they were Hydra, and she was Hydra. But she broke away from that because she, yeah, she was more so into the Avengers. And her love interest in the comic books nowadays is Miles. Well, Miles Morales and her had a relationship. They broke oh, up. Oh, what is this? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just um, read because, something. You know, they had. I mean, Miles was like, "God damn, your parents are Hydra." <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Like, damn. You know, <laughs> like. Uh, and uh, I think that was that was ultimate. That was ultimate Spider-Man, by the way. So that universe got completely waxed and then merged into Prime Earth, where Katie Bishop is a totally different person, essentially. Uh, you know, when they're grown up, and he doesn't even doesn't even really know her i think in his universe or he knows of her but doesn't seek her out um so but in the movie katie bishop was looked at as his daughter because he has an older daughter remember he does have movie. an older daughter and, and he a was son. she was shooting arrows yeah like he was teaching her how to shoot an arrow so i'm a little confused which way they're gonna go with that but maybe she's just his daughter that he's Teach her how to shoot arrows. They're and gonna Katie do... Bishop's just some random woman that, a random you know older girl that. Well, see, we I don't know. Hoping... We don't know what age she is, and one thing that saves it, which is the same thing with what they're doing with um, Wasp uh, and Ant Man's Quantum Mania. They're do they have the fast forward jump of of how many years? Five years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so when Hawkeye takes place. We don't know how old his daughter is, so it could she be maybe, still oh. Haley Seinfeld. Like you know it what? still Funny? could be his daughter. I don't think so. Now that you made that up, I think <laughs> once he goes Ronin and all that stuff, I think he took on a, he probably took on an apprentice, and she ended up being like a daughter replacement to him. Maybe I'm just okay. That makes sense because he lost his family. He went freaking haywire. Yes, right? he did. He lost his family due to the blip. I want to hear more. About this Ronin. girl was there. Maybe she was. Maybe he found her as Ronin. And raised her, you know, as his apprentice. And then when the blip came back and his family came back, you know, maybe he took her on as an apprentice. I don't know. That's probably probably kind of the way it worked. But that's the whole point of, like, having origin stories and interests is because we'll find that out in Hawkeye. So here's, here's something interesting when you want to start pulling things together and how they're using comic books. We've talked about Young Avengers before, and mm -hmm. we just recently talked about Kang. So she, Kate Bishop, and we know that it's, we actually know that it's Kate Bishop. So it's definitely not yeah, it's 100%, her, her Kate daughter. Bishop. So she, it goes, uh, Kate first encountered the young adventures during her sister's wedding. She helped save them with Patriot's throwing star, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then she joins them uh, with Cassie Lang, who they just recast for, for um, Ant-Man and Wasp mm -hmm. Quantumania. And, daughter, yeah. and here we go. Not long afterwards, uh, the mansion was attacked by Kang the Conqueror to join battle. Kate donned the gear of the mansion, including Mockingbird's battle staves, mask, swordsman's sword, belt, blah, blah, and Hawkeye's bow. After defeating Kang and saving the world, Kate and Cassidy remained as permanent members. If they're doing the Kang storyline and they're bringing in Kate and Cassidy, Young Avengers in Phase 4 could be a massive, mass oh, could yeah. bring a I mean, massive impact to it. That's Young sick. Avengers is 100. I didn't even happening. realize that. Once they said Riri Williams, She Hulk, and I was oh, like, "Oh, yeah. this is, we we know what's about to happen now." Um, it's about to go uh, down. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. 85. percent I'll say 75 percent is coming back to the Marvel Universe, Ow. but not in the way we think. Uh, it's a hologram, bro. I told you you can't have no, Riri Williams, true. Ironheart without Robert Downey Jr. You can't have it. It can't happen. But can't you have There's Rhodey, no though, as rescue, the replacement? Rescue can only mentor her somewhat because Pepper Potts is coming back. But she can only mentor her so much. She can't... Pepper Potts don't have it up here as much as Tony had. And all Tony... You think... you Are you... It'll be... We'll be the dumbest joke. Like, he would be the dumbest joke in history if we didn't have Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark actually have a failsafe for if he died. That's 
true. That is very, Especially with very his daughter true. being rumored. I mean, come on now. Like, his daughter's still going to be young, no matter what. Yeah. Because she wasn't part of the blip. So she's not going to be a part of the Young Avengers. We know that. At least as of now. There's not even comic books with Tony Stark's daughter yet. I don't think. I don't think. I mean, I could be wrong. Let me look it up. But um, Ruby Williams is his successor, and it, he will teach her. And it's, it's, it's literally super, it's so canon because Ruby Williams wouldn't become Ironheart without Tony Stark because Tony Stark literally put her through school or he scouted her out. Remember how in, a, in, in Marvel that he has this little talent search thing? Yeah. He still has that in the movie. So he scouted out Ruby Williams. She was nine years old when she completed college. <laughs> like, uh, she's a Jesus. genius. Yeah, she's a genius. She was his highest... Uh, uh, she took. There's a test that Tony Stark has that the kids take, and they get to go to his special school, you know, to prolong technology and stuff. Ah. And she ranked. She scored the highest on his test. And when he went to look at the paperwork, he was like, "Who is this? She's nine years old." And he had to seek her out. And he went to go talk to her, and he found out that she had like a really bad attitude. She was very just like, "I don't care. This any other. Who care?" And he's like, "Why are you like this?" She was like, "Cause I'm bored." <laughs> it's like i that's act like yeah. i don't know but i'm so bored and uh so that's when he took her on and uh bar- and he said well i have this special program and she grew up building you know different suits because she did really do she really loved iron man she built different suits and stuff and um you know when they found out about iron man's death through civil war three yeah and I say deaths very loosely because Comic we don't know if it's a, a, a long lasting coma. We don't know if it's actually death. His body's not buried. All this stuff. Uh, there's a hologram failsafe by Tony Stark to become. He's still there. He's still running Tark, Stark Industries, but as as a hologram with his essence built into it. Everything is an AI that can compute just like Tony Stark because, you know, it was made from him. And uh, he Vision, teaches. He, he has the same Ultron. snarky. Instead of having Friday, it's Tony Stark in the suit. You know, so sick. It's super sick. I mean, imagine, yeah. imagine she boots it up her suit the first time, and you just hear RDJ's voice in there. I'd freak. Yeah. I'd freak the. F- uh, he, he's oh, definitely man. going back because RDJ. <laughs> he's he's famous for saying he's not doing shit, and he and does. He won't do it. But if he if he teases it, he's not a good joke teller. He's definitely coming back, uh, which I'm very happy. And he may only be for that film, but I don't care. Um, the fact that he was like, yeah, you never know what happens. I'm like, all right, you're coming back. Fans are getting what yeah, they Yeah, he want. went from no, no, no to, eh, you never know. I mean, fans spending thousands of dollars putting up billboards saying come back. I mean, he's going to come back. He, the Marvel, him and Marvel know they can really empty pockets, you know, with him coming back. And, and it's, it's a thing where if sales are not doing well, you bring back superstars to bring those sales back up. I mean, they kind of did that. Like, you talk about fail safes. What was it? Iron Man, Iron Man 3, right? That was the one with Mandarin. Where mm-hmm. you had him, you had literally his whole entire army of suits come flying out. What's to say you just can't do that and it's just all his voice and it's just controlled by an AI yeah, so computer I, I that hits his self guys. Like AI. that actually just makes it makes perfect yeah, think, sense. It makes perfect sense. I think they're gonna sense. make him AI. I don't think yeah. he's gonna actually come back in physical form, obviously. Yeah. But I I one hundred percent believe he's gonna be AI, and I think Pepper Potts is going to be the opening scene for it to where she's probably we're probably going to like do that that time gap where we yeah. show the aftermath of you know in game after after the funeral and she's with her daughter and you might hear robert Downey jr's voice in the background at the end of a pro- post credit screen or something pretty sure something like that or, or or the little girl's gonna be like dad or something you know oh, something wild as a post little 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 sprinkle and then we'll yeah. get her and then we'll get rescue because rescue is supposed to have our own stuff too. Uh, so it's 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 a lot I mean, of stuff that's coming bad, down the pipeline. She was badass. She was I mean, in that yeah. in that short it like, makes section so much of, sense. of her being rescued, like that was yeah. really cool. She did it. Really it makes well. so much sense, dude, because she's been through shit with yeah. with Tony Stark. She's almost died how many times with Tony Stark? Like <laughs> more than once for sure. Yeah. So I, it's and, and 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 we already saw the daughter's potential at building stuff and like oh yeah being interested in technology, which is pretty sick. Um, but yeah, I don't think the only version that I've seen of Morgan Stark, or at least two versions, was a cousin and like a villain or something like that. I haven't seen daughter. I now I was a quick search. I could be wrong, obviously. So there's that. 
Morgan Stark. I think Morgan Stark is only part of the MCU. I don't think she's part of. I don't know. Well, oh, hold there's on. football games going on today. Nice. Okay. Yeah, she's only a part of the Marvel Universe, which the Marvel Universe, get this, is Earth weird. One nine 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 nine. Yeah, it's not 616, which is awesome that no. they're separating it. I like that. Yeah, it's a completely different, but it's canon to the comic universe, yeah, which, which is, is pretty sick. Even crazier. Yeah, so we're not actually the ones that the people that we fall in love with in the Marvel universe is Wait, the no, actual that can't Marvel. Be right. like, that can't be right, though. Wait a second, yeah. though. How does that make sense? Because in Loki, they showed um, when he was watching the film of himself in the first episode, mm -hmm. and it went off the reel. It said Loki Earth 616 on it. Yeah, I don't know why that does that. I but don't they, don't, but they, they do things to... for a reason, though. Yeah, I mean, they're where trying to connect you, it. Where did you if hear they that? Do that? If they go, if they go stupid freaking canon, and we get to meet, like, ooh. <laughs> we get to meet, like, the real Spider-Man and a real goddamn, uh, like, Tony Stark, and it be Robert Downey Jr. again, like, That'd be sick. And he's like older, you know, and older like, you know, versions, and the, yeah. like the Robert Downey Jr. we have now older. Yeah. And he's just running Stark Industries and Peter Parker's older and he's just the amazing Spider-Man. Maybe like an older version of, well, I don't think uh, Tobey Maguire is not Earth, Prime Earth, but uh, it's where he's running Peter Parker Industries with, Tar with Stark because they were both pupil and mentor yeah. type thing. And they get involved. That'd be super sick. I, I don't think they would go that far, though. That'd be so cool, though, just to tie it all up together. But they would have to say so. I got to be ridiculous. I got to ask you one question before we get out of here, because we are coming down on time chat. If you got any questions, yep. we got a couple of minutes left. We'll answer to you. Um, you're you're we're, we're kind of like polar opposites. I uh, I don't search for spoilers, but if they're out there, I'll look into it unless it's like a massive, massive spoiler. Like I find out the end of the movie or something and I'm just staying away from it. But you're you're different. I love watching trailers. Trailers is my thing. When the Far From Home trailer comes out, are you going to watch it? In the what? The, the Spider-Man No Way Home, uh... excuse me, Spider-Man No Way Home trailer comes out. Are you <sighs> going to watch it? A part of me wants to and... A part of me doesn't, um, just because I just don't want to spoil it. The story. Yeah. It's tough, man. I don't man. know, man. I don't know. I I think I got enough information on it to be sated. I just don't. I just, I kind of want to see it because I want to put the rest the idea of having like Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield come back. I don't want that, bro. You don't want I them don't back. Want that shit. No. No, I think people are people are feeding off in nostalgia, just like video games. Okay, I can see that. I hear you on that one. Bro, have you seen Tobey Maguire lately? Like, I just don't. I don't want a CG bodied up freaking, you know, I just don't want it, man. I mean, I know it's a big possibility, and people are saying that because of Jamie Foxx coming back, which I didn't want that either. I love Jamie Foxx. I didn't love him as, as the characters that he played. Um, and... Uh, Otto Octavius, he was awesome. You know, it's awesome to see him Alfred come Molina, into the world. Yeah. But I just don't want to see those other Spider-Men, dude. I just don't. I'm not. The world's not ready for a Spider-Man, you know? Spider it's just you, that takes so much okay. setup. And I think the perfect time to have a Spider-Man, and if you want to bring those guys back, is with the Inheritor series. And, and, and like, branch off uh... with Spider-Man, extend his contact track to where Spider-Man has some stuff under his belt before he meets people that have more experience than he does you know i, I like this is our spider-man tom holland is our marvel universe spider-man he is my Let favorite some experience first sure. he has zero experience he just figured out how to be spider-man yeah i think bringing those others in is just going to really water down the experience and uh yeah it's just exactly exactly let's just have one spider-man less fall in love with tom holland more let him have his six movies by his damn self and then let him have his standalone movies by himself. And then we can bring in, you know, the Sinister Six. He hasn't fought enough villains yet. He's you know, only, that's, that's... I mean, yes, he has fought the big. He has fought Thanos. But villain-wise, he's faced off against Vulture and he's faced Mysterio. off against Mysterio. 
Which yeah. Mysterio was really cool because he played with his mind. Like that was really yeah. cool. But Vulture, he was. I loved Michael Keenan as Vulture. I mean, like, technically, I was, he got awesome. beat by Vulture. Yeah, he did. Which is good because yeah. we need Peter getting his ass whooped because that's a very important thing about the comic books. Peter, need, the Vulture was great. Mysterio technically whipped his ass too because he he found out that he's not as he felt weak, and that was good. And yeah. then uh, the real Sinister Six, we need our Kingpin before we get any anywhere with spider-man oh i Kingpin. read that piece of news too oh god yeah did that you hear is that like, or no what about the original uh actor for kingpin or? yeah yeah he didn't die did he no okay just like everyone else apparently he's supposed to re- reprise his role oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, i'm down for yeah. that i liked him as kingpin no he's he's perfect i thought he was dope what's his name something denorfio or something like that i thought yeah, he, was he was fantastic good. He, was, he was perfect I, I loved it um because hell's kitchen is supposed to it was been meant was mentioned a couple times in spider-man yep so that's and then i and then uh daredevil is still and he still Charlie has Cox, his role yeah. as daredevil he's still there so yeah if they bring daredevil in and dealing with see i think that's a perfect crossover having daredevil come back matt murdoch come back have Peter Parker inter- interact with him, learn from him because I mean he's Season very too. Yeah, and then introduce Kingpin, and then Kingpin say, "Oh, you thought you had me, Matt? I got mm, 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 Sinister Six. Boom! Introduce them. Freaking blow up the scenes. Have that be like a an interjection between movies, not just kill off every villain in one movie because got good lord, you know." Marvel needs to stop doing that. Ah, uh, you know, introduce them. True. Like, have Scorpion introduced, and we see Scorpion all beefed up and stuff, and uh, uh, Rhino. Oh, I can't wait to see Rhino. You know, have that Have that done. They Didn't they already show Rhino? They showed Rhino and, oh, he was during a suit. It was the a suit. end scene. No, no, they yeah. showed him in the Being suit. Being detained? No, it was in, it was in um, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. It was Spider-Man oh. 2. It was the end scene he's about to throw like a um a web what do they call them on the ground sewer cover at him if i remember correctly and he is in the rhino suit and it's um oh my god what the hell is that actor's name but yeah it wasn't it was a it wasn't a good rhino i want like i want a cinematic yeah i want so that's but so we still got rhino um sandman all of them you know we still got to introduce all those guys so they setting up for Sinister Six. I I understand that Michael Keaton is in Venom, but I, he's different in Venom. He's not the Vulture. But he's wearing he's... the 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 jumpsuit that you see him in the end of Spider Man, talking to Morbius as well. So like they all these well, movies we'll that they're know coming. What the hell is happening to Morbius? True. <laughs> I mean, uh, here's here's an interesting thing. Like, they may do, like, a new mutants, what they did with Fox, and just get it out there after they buy him, if they buy him. But with Tom Holland, contract at the end of this film with Sony could change everything for the good or everything for the bad. I'm and saying right now, it's if Tom good. Holland is, is not... If they introduce a new Spider-Man, people are just going to be done with I'm Spider-Man. I'm done, because this is including perfect. Me. This is perfect. Including me. Because there's... Yeah, there's no other person. He's young. He, you have a ton of years with Tom Holland. He's young, he's fit, he can flip, do whatever you need him to do. He's very easy to work with. And guess what? He doesn't cost as much. I'm going to so, I'm gonna make a prediction. Mm. So, Disney, the mouse, Ellswood, jo- bought Fox for $75 billion. They mm-hmm. bought Star Wars for $3.2, I believe it was. It wasn't four, it wasn't two, it was like three point two. Which I feel I feel like they just threw a number out there. Yeah. If you were I don't going, feel like they had a negotiation. Oh yeah, no. If you wanted to buy Star Wars, it would I personally think it's more than three point two billion, but yeah. But like I don't think they're gonna buy Sony. I think they're gonna say Tom Holland's not coming back unless it's part of the uh, MCU. Blah, 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 blah. Mobius this, Venom that, whatever. We're buying all the rights back of that of, yep. of Spider-Man. And yep. you're going to see it actually probably be around $75 billion also. It's going to be... Oh. It, it may actually <laughs> top... It may actually top the three, uh, $100 billion. Oh, and it's absolutely. just going to be for bringing Spider-Man back Bro, in no doubt. to the Marvel Spider-Man universe. Spider-Man is the biggest moneymaker for yeah. Marvel. Yeah. The bi- That's why Sony is playing what they're playing. Because they understand how big Spider-Man... Yeah. Also, they understand how big Marvel and Disney will get if they get Spider-Man in their pockets. It's over. Like, <laughs> Sony has nothing else. And you know what the thing that Sony needs to concentrate on? Why the freak aren't you guys making God of War movies? Yeah. Like, my God. You, they have so much in their back pocket. 
that they can do. Damn, Let go game. of Spider-Man, dude. Leave it alone. You don't own that shit, really. You know, it's, it's Marvel stuff. Concentrate on your own. God of War movie, if done correctly, would make more money than Venom. Hands oh, down. Yeah. Like, why waste your time? Anyway, <laughs> I just wish I could consult with these people. <laughs> Sony's got you know some great. Just, Sony's it's Sony got... Western market. It's not Eastern. They don't give a shit about Spider Man. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what I do like what they're doing though. Um, like I don't know about the the, the Nathan Drake, um, Tom Holland, Mark Wahlberg Uncharted movie. I like how they're making Last of Us a series yes. and not a movie. I yes. I said this with the book Ready Player One, which I absolutely <sighs> love. I want to see more video games and more books. To be at, yeah. adapted as series because they're long form storytelling. I'm sure, yeah. don't get me wrong, I'm sure you can definitely, because it worked with comic books, you can turn them into a three hour or two and a half hour uh, film. Yeah. But it you know doesn't what? work, it doesn't work for everyone unless for God of War specifically, uh -huh. take take God of War, but you can't you can't take that 20 hour story and bring it into three. You have to go Lord of the yeah. Rings, no, they film it all at each... once, and it needs to be yeah. a trilogy. Just yeah, starting off the Witcher. That's the only the way least, I could see it as a movie. At the least, that's why trilogy. I like Witcher, even though it was a book turned into a video game. I like The Witcher as a series because it's yeah. longer form storytelling, well, and that's what that, I think you give you people need. time to research the character yeah, and fall in love too. with the character and become fans. You know, and it's like, yeah, I completely agree with you. Um, that needs to be a thing. I just. <sighs> I feel like Sony has so much potential to do so many things. Yeah. Um, you know, they can even put their finger into buying Gorilla. Uh, they, they already bought Gorilla. Didn't they buy Gorilla? Gorilla Studios is is a first party uh PlayStation. They're they're part of their, I, their first party. Well, probably look look for PlayStation to scoop them up because no, they Sony, already no, bought... Sony owns them. The... Sony owns okay. uh, for Horizon say... or Horizon Zero Dawn and Forbidden West, that studio, right? Yes. Yes, they own them. hundred percent own them. Okay. PlayStation owns them. Make a freaking Horizon movie. Yeah, I would love to see that. That's perfect. Dude, they could take... Think about Avatar meets, you know, other movies we already seen. Put it together, bro. People eat that shit up. And yeah. like, I'm not excited for the new Avatar movie. I don't give a crap about Same. it. Because I was a kid when that movie came out, all right? It's too, too much uh, of a gap. Too much of a gap for me. Yeah, it's too much of a gap, man. I, I don't know. But anyway, I think I think there's so many great things they can do. Mar Sony has so many bags. They're just... I think they just want to play with the big leagues, you know. Disney, di oh God, I'm praying. I hope, and I'm I'm pretty sure because I, I think Tom Holland's gonna be one of those people where like he's gonna be like, I'm not gonna ruin my image for for Sony. Just not gonna do it. Yeah, I didn't fall in love with Sony. I fell in love with Marvel, you know. And I think that's that's gonna be a big big ball player right there because you can't have a Spider Man universe without a Spider Man. And the fans are just not gonna go for another Spider Man. <laughs> Tom Holland was a risk. Ah, yeah, it I was see. a big risk. I remember, I remember the first time he was introduced, people were like, hell no. <laughs> you know what they, when they said that? Hell no. They were like, no, bring back Tobey Maguire. I'm just like, this dude is, you know how old Tobey Maguire is? He can't, can't do anything that Tom Holland does, you know? And then when we when we saw uh, Homecoming, it was dope. Yeah. It was great. You know, so I don't know. We'll see. <clears throat> Warhammer 40K. Warhammer is a massive franchise. I'm surprised well, they yeah, haven't really yeah. done you know, that. Oh, you know, I can't wait to see Dune. I cannot wait yes, to see Dune. Dune the tra yes, that looked really, really good. So much that I'm reading the books now. Ooh, and okay. Freaking Zendaya in it. Uh, uh, Jason Manoa in it. Yep. I mean, they have so many they great got very actors and actresses cast. in it, and it looks good. Oscar I Isaac is in it. I hope yep. it's good. I really when does hope that it's good come out? It comes out soon, really I think. Soon. They were doing a lot of marketing on it, so... That is a trilogy October. series in itself. Yeah. October? Jesus yeah. Jesus Christ. Everything is in October. So that's a trilogy, yeah. period. We know we're getting three movies with that, hands down. But there's 12 other books or something like that? So or 12 books, books total? Yeah. Uh, dealing, with, dealing with Dune, because you have the children of Dune. You have all this stuff. You have all these, like, origin stories. I hope they series those things. I hope they put series in it. But I'm like a huge, I'm a huge like Zendaya fan. And so I... I I'm here for it. I love seeing her grow. We we watched I watched Zendaya grow up in her career, um, you know, from Disney days to now, and and she's incredible. Uh, Jason Manoa is living his best life right now. Happy Jason is always a good Jason in movies. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's living his best life. That dude oh, he is, is literally he's a, he's a, he's a spiritual being. Every time like, you see him in talk shows, like he is, 
he, his he's, Instagram he's, account's fun. Yeah, yeah, he's he's beyond happy. And uh, to to the to the game, I agree with you. Whether it's Warhammer or I know we talked about Blizzard earlier, but like WoW, like even if you did like an Overwatch series, like those need to be series because they're just very long story form. We've already seen mm -hmm. WoW movie tank. It's just not. Well, like they're said, just not they're, anything they're, Blizzard right now. It's, they just it's need gonna to be, stay yeah, off the grid. They're, they're not going to do anything for a while. Yeah, I'm surprised. They just need to stay off the grid, repair their whole goddamn company, completely get rid of everybody, and rehash a brand new thing. Yeah. And you know what? If every man I hear hates me for this, they need to put a woman in power. Yep. She doesn't have to be CEO, but make her up there. You know, because if they had someone, and granted, they did have women up there that was quiet, and shame on them. Shame on them. But if they did have somebody in power that was that was willing to work together like a co ownership type yeah. thing, and they can they can pull everything down together, it it'll show unionship, and it's what not going to be a recovery down, yeah. that's going to be instant. It's going to take many a years, probably four to five. But at least the company won't go under. But the way they're going with this hiding bullshit and this 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 denying in court and blocking people and firing people for speaking out, that is not a good take. That's man. not a good take. That's not a good uh, yeah. thing right there. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's just not working. Man, it's but two anyway, o'clock. Man, uh, this went by. 40, this went by quick 40K today, games, man. Games using Warner Brothers. Eh, my thing is this: if it's if it can work, it, it could work. I'm I'm all for people taking risk. I'm a risk taker now. If people want to take a risk and 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 make video games and make movie series and make TV series for the sake of video games and comic world, world do it. At this yeah. point, do it and try to do it well. If you don't, we'll forget about it. But uh, you know, other than that, just do it and do it well. But anyway. It's been a great talk, man. We oh shit, we went over. That's yeah. not, that's not like us at all. This this was a really good episode. It's well, been a catch while. Up, catch up. It's a catch yeah. up episode. Yeah, it's yeah. but it was absolutely fantastic. It was great to to get behind the mic and uh, camera and speak yeah. to you again and speak to the audience about about the things we love, my man. About the things we love. And next week we will be back. We're gonna be on a yeah. uh, for for at least for at least for a while now, right? We're gonna be yeah. we're gonna yeah, be yeah, do, yeah. we're gonna be here uh, every Saturday. Here on the the Rare Drop Network on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Rare Drop. Uh, we will have our podcasts that usually come out every Monday as well. Mm. So uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Twitch. You'll be able to check myself, Nighthawk Plays, and Frank out. Uh, definitely, it seems like over for the next two months at least, talking yeah, yeah. so much yeah. goodness with you in this, in this superhero universe. Yeah, we got a lot coming up. Uh, we'll be talking. Uh, we'll be talking about what if next week. So make sure you do your yep. homework and watch at least the first episode and the second episode if you can. We'll be getting a little bit more into that. I'll be talking about the the Easter eggs and stuff happening in what if one one episode one uh, lead into one uh, two. Uh, also, War for Wakanda. If you're interested, it comes out on the 16th. That's in two days. So check that out. Uh, I'll probably give it a little play play here and there. Uh, to see how I like it I'll, yep. I'll, uh, on release day and uh, give you guys info on that. And other than that. Yeah, guys, stay cool. Stay, you know, stay safe. Wear your mask. Take your vaccine if you can get it. You're privileged enough to be able to get vaccinated like a lot of countries can't. So please at least try to do that. And, uh, you know, be safe out there, guys. Uh, you know, people are dying and it sucks. What do you and got? Thank going you so very much for being here, guys. We appreciate you all. And thanks for joining us on uh, the comics on the mix live here on the Rare Drop Network. Take it easy and we'll see you guys uh, next Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Peace. Bye.